All right, how's everybody doing? Um, this is the first uh, uh, Foxhole dev live stream. Um, we have to apologize, you're gonna hear some construction. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's all this construction going on below us and it might be kind of loud. So uh, construction stream 2016. Um, so uh, if, you don't, <laughs> if you don't know, if you guys weren't in the previous stream, uh, my name is Riggs or Matt, uh, I guess in the Discord. Um, this is Mark. Mark uh, Foot. Mark Foot. Mark Foot here. Um, this I'm is, HB. Uh, and uh, it's uh, Alcas, also known as Nuba. Nuba. Um, so today, what we're going to do is we're going to go through uh, the community highlights. So we're going to kind of do some reactions to the community highlights, and uh, then we're going to also go, uh, we're also going to talk about uh, some new features that are coming up in the next dev blog, and we're going to do a Q and A with you guys. Um, so. Um, yeah, I guess. I don't know the, if you just kind yeah, of want to uh, get into it. Um, I'm going to pass it over to HB. It seems like he's Hello, and welcome hey. to our retrospective stream first edition. I don't know what that means. Uh, hello Special and welcome. Special 100th Foxhole retrospective extravaganza or whatever. The I, first 100th. <laughs> the 100th. Uh, I am going to toss it over to HB. He is going to be your... Uh, MC for the night. Thank you very much I for guess. this lovely welcome. Uh, yeah, <laughs> everybody, thank you very much for showing up. Uh, this is going to be uh, our special. It's in, com in celebration of our 100th uh, dev stream. We're going to be doing a retrospective of the game. We're going to, it's going to be very informal. Uh, you guys can toss questions on the chat. We're going to try to answer them as they come up. It's gonna basically be a little like behind the scenes uh, look at the stuff that we did, where the game was in 2016 up until now. Uh, yeah. For the I record, for the record, this isn't like a normal dev stream. I see some people saying, "I didn't look for the Reddit thread." Uh, that's for another time. This yeah. is a re this is our retrospective stream that we announced last week. It's not. It's not a. It's not a, a, a development dev stream or anything like that. This is just like a special thing that we're doing. It's yeah. not. It's not supposed to be. Very so we're not rigid or serious. So we're not talking. To be clear, we're not talking about the game as it is today. We're not going to be talking about new features. We're not going to be talking about anything to do with no. Foxhole now. Um, so all your balanced complaints about. Update forty three. Save it for the next stream. They don't um, complain. They don't have any complaints. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna have some beverages. No. And we're gonna look back at the shit that has happened over the yeah. last four or five years. We can look back and see who we were biased for first. Four to five dev stream. <laughs> when? Man, it wouldn't be so. Co I, I actually love fortified. Should've, did you put fortified in this at all? Actually, you know what is funny. You guys will um, see some fortified in there because. Actually, yeah. if you don't mind me, like. I don't know if you have any rules, HP, but... Uh, uh, no, first uh, Mark is already taking over. It's fine. I'm already taking over, but um, I still remember the day when we first came up with the idea for uh, Foxhole. It was actually the summer before Fortified shipped. Um, myself and Alcast went to the office on a Sunday because we were um, trying to strategize about what the next big thing the company's going to work on. And... Um, and we looked at each other and we we're like, we have to work on this game that we always wanted to work on. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, there wasn't a top-down camera attached to it. It wasn't like, let's make a top-down, like, uh, sandbox war first, strategy game. First versions that was pitched was a turn-based game. It, it was a turn. Well, like we thought, hey, like our point wasn't let's make a top-down game. Our point was let's make a game where mm -hmm. it's a persistent world. That was kind of like the first ingredient. It's tons of players on each side all working together to try to win a war and the war lasts for weeks right and that was kind of the the thing that we want to do and our first thought was like because we were pre-optimizing the technical side we're like well how the hell are we, are we going to do that um maybe it should be turn-based so so that way we don't have to um worry about all the hard things about making a real-time multiplayer game supporting that many players um and we also discussed it being like a uh, third person, first person perspective, but it's funny because the, the reasoning behind why it's top down was n not so much technical issue, but it was more like we wanted to try and distill it down to um, 
the format where the focus can be on the persistent war, on the working together, mm-hmm. and the focus is not going to be on oh, I I I shot this guy because like my Twitch skills were were faster than your Twitch skills. But um, you know, we really wanted to, to make it very pure. Pure. The game needs to be purely about working together, right? And, purely about and, shadow dancing. Purely yeah, about, about shadow dancing. Getting that right. shadow then, dancing before your opponent. So, that was so that's kind of day one. Yeah, I won't to, I won't get too much further than that, but that's kind of like this. You brought up fortified, so I was like, it 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 brought yeah. up that memory because we were right in the middle of working on fortified at the time. Right. I wish, Way, I, wish uh, I wish Adam was here because um I remember when you guys first announced fortified or for fortified foxhole uh, Fox like Fox. was going to be the project. It was called like Project War at the time, and uh, I remember you announced it. And, like Adam and I like afterwards had a conversation. We're like. The fuck are we gonna do this? Like, <laughs> we, were, we were literally like, so, so yeah. like, oh, before we you know get what too I'll far, yeah. I just, I just, I just want to, uh, before we get too far, I just want to uh, say something. Like, I love it. I don't want to, I don't want to like keep interrupting like the flow of memories and stuff like that. Yeah. Just want to uh, tell one thing to the people that are watching. I know that a lot of people uh, contributed with like sending me things uh, of the things that the community did. Uh, because I, I, I told them so, and uh, uh, rightly, uh, but I just want to make sure that, like, uh, this is going to be, we didn't, in the end, we decided that this is going to be more uh, focused on the, on the background of the development. It's going to be things that we had seen, like some, some screenshots and some videos of the stuff that we did internally, because uh, there's so much that the community did throughout all the years of development. that I think it's, the community deserves a retrospective of its own, to be honest. Like, it was, it's so overwhelming that I think that we should totally, like, focus on the community separately because it's, it, it was amazing. It was uh, so, many, so many cool things. So also, you guys uh, this one we're going to focus stuff. more on the Foxo. I think I've actually I... shared some of this stuff with the community before, but, but for the most part, like, most people haven't seen what we're going to show. Probably not. Yeah, so, yeah. Actually, so, so actually, to your point, HB, I actually think there's more things... <laughs> to show from the community than we would, than we ever would have to show, so it oh, definitely warrants yeah. definitely warrants a separate stream. Absolutely, not even a question. <laughs> yeah. So what you're saying is cool. this time gonna... they Wait, get to it? laugh at us, and next yeah. time we get to laugh at them. That's, the That's right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna bring it up the first. I'm gonna bring it. Start uh, bringing up the very beginning. Uh, this is the latest. The the the, the, the like oldest thing that I could find on Foxhole development. Was like in February of nice, 2016. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, so, <laughs> so I've shared I've shared the bottom image uh, with uh, Fod once, uh-huh. um, and uh, just and because we were just talking about like the beginning of the game, but yeah, this was um this was pretty much like me and Adam at the time. Uh, I, I wasn't I wasn't there yet. Um, we were looking at um the the one in the t- the image in the top corner is uh, Adam's uh, art document, art design document. And we were looking at, like, uh, we had just discovered Running With Wife Rifles, and we were like, oh, that's, like, a really cool, like, game. We didn't even know, like, we didn't even know it existed when we had come up with this concept, and we started working on it. And so um, we were like, what if we went between Running With Rifles and Company of Heroes as a style? Somehow we ended up with Dota. <laughs> I don't know, like, the, the, this bottom image is, like, pretty much looks like Dota. But, um... But uh, it was it was a really uh, it was really fun to work on these first things because we'd been working on a really cartoony game though like Fortified was very very cartoony so our heads were just I think kind of in this yeah. space at the time but this was def this was the very very first like let's wrap our head around like what a top down game looks like and this was the first art we put on in the engine at all so it's pretty cool looking back at it. No, it was it was it was a really cool time. It was I think that at that time the development team was like seven or eight people, uh, which showcased that we didn't grow that much, but we, we we almost I guess it was the whole company there. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if some of the programmers that we have right now I know some of them were not, but uh, there's a couple of them that in my memory I don't know if they started prior to Foxhole or after Foxhole. Uh, I was number sure. eight. I remember I was the eighth. You were the eighth one. Yeah. I don't know where 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 uh, Pristine Chaos and 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 Casey uh, fall in. I think they came I, in a little bit later. 
a little bit later because after. I think in the beginning it was just uh, Mark Alcos, uh, Chris at the time, uh, Stefan, me, Rig, and Adam, right? Yeah, I mean, this art prototype, like for the record, it was just it was like me and Adam, period. Oh, uh, hey, hey, I that character there was animated you took it in from Mix you took it from Mixamo. I forgot, yeah. Um, <laughs> the, but you were actually working on some super secret stuff at the time, so. I was, yeah. I was working on something. <clears throat> well, uh, well, we we can we can talk about things that in a game development company, it's normal to have like prototypes that never go anywhere. Uh, we at the time when we were thinking about Fox, so there were also other prototypes that we were at least exploring the idea. Never went anywhere, but I was working on something completely separate, and then I just. I literally just put a, a character walking and holding a gun. It was so it was garbage, but it was fun. It worked. It was fine. And this is our first prototype video. I actually have a video of our first prototype. I wanted to show. Oh, I I couldn't find this. I was looking for this. Yeah, man. This is oh, funny. I remember this one. I remember the music too. Yeah, I don't even know if I, we can play. I, this I don't music. think we can play the music. I, probably... I think the music is from Revenant. <laughs> so, Look at this. Look at the camera. It's so. So shaky, <laughs> and and Actually, this this that, tank is from fortified. That tank is from fortified. Yeah. 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 So basically, one thing that we did because all companies do that, particularly in the prototyping phase, is uh. There's no game here, by the way. Yeah, there's nothing. There was like it was nabbing assets from other from other games. I think that the car might even be from. The car, the car was from uh, like turbo. Oh, Squid the or sandbags. Something. The sandbags are definitely from Fortified. Yeah, the sandbags are from Fortified. Um, yeah, I think the one thing that that reason why we did this was um, we were really adamant on trying to figure out exactly where the camera was going to be because that was like a real hard thing to nail down. And and even till this day now, like um, as you guys know, the camera's always things. you know it's changed. But we really wanted to nail down first what what the feel of the camera was before we even began anything else. Um, so this that, was a, that was kind of the, that, that was kind of the purpose of, um, of this test. So we looked at a lot of references for like top down. We looked at a lot of real time strategy games. Uh, we looked at a lot of top down shooters. I think we took a look at, um, at games like hell divers. Mm -hmm. um, we looked at running with rifles. We looked at like just any top down shooter, any top down game we can get our hands on. Um, we looked at, and I remember specifically, there's, there's another document, HB, you probably don't have it here, but we even looked at SimCity. Yeah, I, I didn't put wanted, it in because I didn't want to put it in documents because documents, looking at documents are boring. It, so it's I, boring, I but, but like we, we want to, we basically did um, versions where it was the most orthographic and then mm -hmm. we did ones that were the least orthographic and then we laid out every variation in between yeah. those two and we're like okay well this is the good balance between that right because sim city is like extremely orthographic it's it's just uh it's like ice i guess i guess like isometric isometric um, yeah. for the people that don't know uh isometric means that like the, you barely see any perspective in the camera in the camera yeah, uh, orthographic means it's from one side or from the top or it's like it's only two points of perspective only one point of perspective Actually, no points. Yeah, of perspective. No points. Um, no points of perspective. And uh, in the case of Foxhole, we we do have a perspective camera, even though it's top down, which did help a lot to 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 have a relationship between sizes. But if you actually looked at the assets on a on a first person view, like we see the world, uh, the, the the assets are are horribly distorted. Yeah, they're like scary. because they had to read from top down and there still are up to this day i would say a lot of them are yeah mm -hmm. um one uh, another fun fact all of the visual effects that you see in here the, the fire the smoke coming out of the houses there's like little puffs of smoke all that shit's from fortified as well <laughs> For the exactly. that was the first time i'd ever seen that video i'd never seen that video before. yeah I, I i had to dig deep to find some old stuff these are these are cool. These are the first concepts when we're starting to finally nail, I think, the the visual the aesthetics of the game. And I we of course we started with the character because the just a caveat, I think these character concepts are really, really early, and I think they're paintovers of stuff from uh 
The Last of Us. I actually don't think they're like totally original. I might mm-hmm. be wrong, but uh, I think they are. Yeah, but this is right. this is like a phase in in development where um you uh you just need to look at things like um this isn't where like Julian gets to the point where he does like a final concept. This is just like what could it look like? And we, so we yeah. put things together really, really quickly. And at this point, Mark, Mark had seen some of the concepts and he's like, mm, I want or the, the, some of the art tests. And he was like, I kind of want it to feel more like oppressive. I remember that was like one of the words that you used. And you're like, what if we try like a wintery scene? So mm-hmm. Adam and I like redid everything. <laughs> Basically what we redid this? everything in the scene. Um, were these images you or were they Adam? Who did them? Uh, Adam did the uh, character and the, and the paint overs. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I, I, he, he would be able to correct me. I wish he was here. Um, he'd be able to correct me if, if they were totally original, but I have a feeling they're paint over some something else just to get a vibe. Um, I've never seen these again. This is the first time I've ever actually, seen those images too. They are uh, paint overs, but they are, um, I think what mostly he did is that he, he used the pose, the pose of a certain yeah, counterpart. Yeah. It's, it's like pretty much all his paint over, but it, it, yeah. Um, so the, um, the look at the difference between the character concept uh to the right and the, <laughs> the, the actual size of the model on the yeah. left uh there's the helmet is gigantic and everything because you have to read from top down yeah and like i think at this point there wasn't um even a colonial faction so i see some people mm-hmm. in chat saying that we made the colonial faction first but there was no actually it was kind of funny because at the beginning when alcas and i thought of the concept we actually um our first thought was to base it off of like a alternate history, like, like a real world alternate history. And we went to, so, so sort of like a what if, right? Like what if, what if like World War II never ended, right? Uh, or what if World War I never ended or something in between. And um, I still remember that I have a memory of, um, I went to Matt and we talked about it and I asked Matt to come up with a starting point, just something like, some starting point for, how that might work. And I remember you, you did that starting point, you sent it to me and I was really busy that week. And, um, I was at the airport, um, there to pick up some family and the, the plane was taking a long time. I don't know why I remember this, but I sat there at Pearson airport reading through all your lore, man, <laughs> and thinking about it. And it was wild, man. It was like, <laughs> and then this happened. And then instead of the Cold War, this other thing happened. I don't remember. The it was pretty, it was pretty, it was I had like, to come up with basically like Mark was like, yeah. come up with the reason why World War II wouldn't have ended. <laughs> and I think, was, I think like the gist of it was though. like the Vatican got nuked or something. <laughs> like right. it was something ridiculous. Um, but the so. requirement was that it had to feel like it could have happened. Right. Yeah, and I yeah. liked that part because Matt stayed very true to that. Like there was an explanation for everything. It wasn't like hand wave, like, oh, and then the Russians were mad and this is what happened. It was totally like this guy got assassinated. And then I I even wrote a short story. Actually, just so fun fact for everybody to get mad. The wardens came first. Um, I wrote a short story about the wardens. I won't get into it, but that was one of the things where we were like, I think we should change it. Like after I wrote that, I pretty I'm pretty sure Mark and I had a meeting and we were like, Let's go a different route. Let's go like totally original so, after that. Yeah, I think when we went the totally original route, we sort of um, one thing that changed was that we kind of tripled down on how serious we were about it. Like mm-hmm. we were totally, we were like super anal about it. I remember we wanted to nail down everything. Like at first, it started out like, "Hey, this is cool," but we were. I remember the meetings we had at the beginning, Matt, and we were so adamant to figure out exactly everything that happened in the past. Like we wanted to figure out, we didn't even actually care that much about the present because we were like, it would feel more real to us if the past was fully, fully laid out. So Mm -hmm. we were very strict about making sure that every, every faction, every one had a proper motivation for everything. And like, um, we had the proper goals and we had like a mood board and we went through this entire process. Um, and I'm so glad that we did that because our original hand wave, like, Hey, let's just make an alternate history was I think way less cool than what we came up with eventually. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think it started with like, what do we love about like, I actually, this is literally how it started. We were like, what do we love about like fantasy fiction? We looked at like Lord of the Rings. We looked at game of Thrones and the, the commonality between a lot of it was 
they're kind of like the end of a story, not the beginning. And so there's all this like rich world behind it. And so Foxhole, we wanted to have that same sort of philosophy. This is kind of like mm. coming at a culmination point, not at like it's not the 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 the, the start. It's not the mm. the catalyst. Origin. Yeah, and the thing we we kind of wanted to um cuz I I'm really like a, you know, a fan of history and and I think that I wanted it to feel like um when I was in school I took a lot of history courses. Um I was uh I was close to being a history minor cuz I was not because I was aiming for it because I just took so many history courses because as my uh electives because I was a fan of it. And I wanted it to feel like if 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 a professor was talking about this in a history class, it wouldn't feel like out of place, right? Um, that was what I wanted to see from it, and I really wanted it to feel like um, sort of like we kind of uh, thought about some of the ancient the ancient Greece um, uh, history. And we kind of wanted to base some of it off of that, but instead of it, the technology was like World War One, World War Two level of mm. technology, and that was sort of the goal behind it, right? So, yeah, yeah. it's been and it's been fun. Um, we could probably talk about this for like a whole stream. So. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, sorry, no, uh, sorry, HB. I just no, this, like, yeah. this is exactly the stuff that I that that I, that I want to hear. Uh, somebody was asking if uh, I know. I promised I wasn't going to look at the chat, but I couldn't resist. Matt, I'm so sorry. Uh, somebody was asking if there's anything from the original character on the left that is still survives up to up to this day. Like, for instance, the helmet. No, even though the helmet, uh, I, I think the colonial helmet is similar. Uh, it's a comp everything that you see on the left character was absolutely discarded. Uh, even even more so because since it was uh, it was based on something else, somebody else's work. In this, even if it's just my have gene, just a pose. One of the things that we're very careful is to make sure that everything that we create is original, right? Uh, so no, nothing survived. Mm -hmm. I think the longest, like honestly, the longest thing that survived from this point of the game might have been the sandbags. And they no. were sandbags, the sandbags that were from, <laughs> there were no. sandbags that were from fortified. No, what was the long? No, the um, um, we, we remade the sandbags, I think. Right. No, no, I, no it, it hasn't survived yet, but I think it was. Oh, the, okay, okay. I don't okay. think there's yeah. anything in there that survived up until oh. now. Uh, I yeah, think yes, everything got completely done. That wooden fence in that screenshot is in the game. Oh my god, you're right! No, Absolutely. No. Okay, there you go. There <laughs> and and there. actually, there the, the, the basic snow yeah. texture as well is also the same texture that's in the game. Okay. So, with the with the weather things. update, everything got changed. Wasn't this though? But the like the right base. It's not in these screenshots, but the basic rifle is still from those. No, nah, it was totally it? redone. It was no. redone. It was redone as well. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, I think the next part is kind of cool because it also showcased some of us like looking at like different yeah, locations. I forgot about the one at the top left, it's like giant tower. I know, right? The scale was really uh, different in these early yeah. screenshots. We were playing a lot about like verticality and seeing how it would work, which we found out it doesn't really work very well. It was a little more because... Diablo at that time, a little less like kind of R RTS. We, you know, Adam, like kind of the whole R team is like are like huge Diablo fans. So, oh yeah, um, that was kind of our first point of reference. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I remember doing the UI at uh, the top right image was the image that I used the most because it was like an empty image, like a kind of like an empty field. There's a lot of like dead space. I used that image a lot when I was first creating the UI concept for mm -hmm. for the game. I think that at this point we were starting to I was starting to get involved in this. I think the other project was starting to die off. And I was starting to get involved because I remember using that top right image a lot. Yeah. So, so um, if you don't mind, HB, there was a question that yeah, yeah. was asked. It's uh, from Torrento. Um, yeah. He asked, "Was the original project about two nations in a war? This guy looks just like just a mercenary, or gives off more fantasy vibes." And um, I'm surprised that he used the term mercenary because that's a term that we use some at some point in our development. So I think at the beginning there was a bit 
more of a post-apocalyptic vibe to the game. Like, even that's why some of, if you were around early enough to be in the pre-alpha, some of the buildings had a lot of the corrugated sheet metal type of design uh, in it. So the more, like, slightly one step over to something like Fallout and the fight and the soldiers themselves were less part of a, um, they had more of a feel of, like, maybe a bit more of like a ragtag army in some way. That's why that, that soldier looked a little bit different. The old um, colonials were yeah. like their entire like homeland had been like eradicated and they had like crossed the sea looking for like a new place to settle or something. So they were more like a pioneer army. Like it wasn't, it wasn't the same thing quite that it is now. Um, yeah. So, and we were looking a lot at like the walking dead, um and uh was that was that other book and movie um the about the with uh what's his face from the thing um he's <laughs> yeah. trying to he's trying to like children can't be born and uh children of men children of yeah men. children um, of men if we were looking at children of men i think that was like a really huge inspiration early on for like what we were oh, trying yeah, to like yeah. the vibe that we were trying to get uh, but we did when we switched when we switched um to like a totally original universe we literally threw all of that out and julian came on board and we and and that and it, like that all went out so, in, in, so, in the garbage <laughs> so one thing that is interesting is um <sighs> the wardens uh have naval superiority because they were based on the athenians which also had a very strong navy right and they're kind of um the, the warden faction was somewhat based on that or at least had some giving, inspiration. Giving away all the secrets, yeah. Mark. Yeah, giving away all the <laughs> a top secret. Yeah. Um, that's fine. Um, <laughs> was the original setting so, more like Cold War? No, it was like, what if World War Two just stayed World War Two for lots of years? Like it was. Um, yeah, but, but yeah. It, what, what if yeah, World was... War Two led to like world destruction? Basically, was so. Kind of what, what caused the change from from us changing the lore? What was the, uh, like, the like I said? Um, we kind we kept going into it and. Um, I never per personally I never got into like a rhythm where I was like really happy with it. I always felt like it was like contrived or I was trying to like I don't know, it just didn't feel right and I, I tried to get in, in that headspace a little bit more and I wrote this like really dark, deep, like short story and it never clicked. It just didn't click and we were like, This could be so much cooler if we just weren't constrained by these things. Um for and sure. so so then the lack of constraints made it way more interesting for both both of us and then i feel like it resonated as we got into concept design and it just kind of like kept going and, and it always felt really original after that and and i've never seen it before like i've never seen like alternate reality like a totally alternate reality like world war ii setting with like a different like world history and you know, all well, that stuff i wish one, one, that's like, one of the, my favorite parts of foxhole sorry sorry julian that's one of my favorite parts of foxhole in the sense that uh it, it gives a lot of liberty uh and it, it, as you said, it's, it's something that we don't see often. Like, is the we always said uh, something that we used to say a lot, and particularly in this part type of development when we're talking about the lore. I remember this. Uh, we always said like the foxhole technology development, lore wise, and why we create a certain uh, uh, weapon or whatever is the, because the technology develop instead of developing vertically, that it gets better and better and better. It develops horizontally. It stagnates, but it stays in that same realm, right? I think Julian, you can back me up in here. Oh yeah, no. When I first came on, that was one of the, one of the first discussions me, Matt, and Mark had was that technology didn't advance; it just got like walls got thicker instead of technology advancing, and armor got thicker instead of um, yeah, instead of having computers, they just had thicker like steel, <laughs> and that was kind of that was the starting point. Uh, some of the yeah, early con too. hopefully maybe we can move on to the next thing i don't know yeah i think we concepts. should move on yeah yeah this yeah. is yeah, this uh, is still I, we're, we're taking stuff. way too long for yeah each i one. think we're taking too long <laughs> let's just move it along <laughs> let's just move it along here yeah uh so this is some more, more cool stuff that like very 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 i'm i i really wanted uh people to understand how is how game development happens and i wanted to show them anecdotes of game development so one of the one of the reasons why I included this one is because sure it's more cool slides or whatever, but uh I wanted to showcase, particularly on the bottom left one, that we have something called wood and concrete and textile to make a campsite. And this 
this this picture on the left is the reason why up until this day and this is not going to cause any effect is why we still call all the basic materials in our game they're still internally for us still called cloth yeah and that's like i don't think we were ever going to change that because it's it's like it's so basic when and you, it touches on everything a, when you have a code name like that that is touches everything it's impossible to change it's so, impossible to change um, is it, are you sure this isn't spoilers for 1.0 and that we're adding uh, cloth and wood to the game? <laughs> I love to, <laughs> we bring it back all together in a yeah. circle and then we go back to this. Yeah. Uh, still not my, like I still wasn't here yet for this stuff too. This is the first time I'm seeing this stuff. No, that's why the concepts are much worse. Than this stream is all for me, guys. Like, I'm so, seeing this all new. So, one thing that makes me smile is that that foxhole at the beginning was not actually like it was above the ground because we didn't know how to make holes in the ground yet. So, now <laughs> contrast that to the craters that we that we just introduced in the last update, they actually go underground. That was a cool. big deal. Yeah. I, I, that... I, people, people forget, like, this is such a big deal for us. I think it was one of the biggest biggest milestones, and we'll get to that. It was one of the biggest milestones on Foxhole development. Like, really, yeah, we'll get to that. Um, so. I took that crater and I um and I used that crater uh to actually like when impacts happened to spawn craters, and we ended up having to remove it because it would always spawn in the air and shit. It was never like a real crater. Anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. <clears throat> uh, this is oh, this is a cool thing that I found from a long time ago when we were testing. Uh, camera controls. Uh, so this is fortified. It's using the fortified uh, uh, assets and everything. I but think this fortified, is the fortified game is, engine. Like this is just yeah, fortified. exactly. Fortified is a third person uh, over the shoulder uh, uh, camera, right? And we were testing the new camera for Foxhole. It's like how you control, how do you move and control at the same time? Uh, and this was it. That's the so, old truck too, for Fox. Like that, that was the truck in Foxhole for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think just, this. I think this is one of the very first things ever done for. Th- it was. Uh, it was ha- around this time. It was hard for me to know what came first or or later in the timeline. Uh, later on, it's more it's more clear because at this point we didn't have Discord, so all the files that I was finding was were from our or like particularly or like our internal drives. Uh, and sometimes the dates don't actually match the so, actual development because they might have like might have copied like the file or them. something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is really cool to see just fortified though. <laughs> I kind of forget sometimes. Fortified is a cool game. If you haven't played fortified, you should play. <laughs> Matt, Mark is gonna hate you. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a fun, it's a cool game. It's a fun game. It was it was a lot. Of, let me say it this way: it was so much fun developing fortified. Like it was incredibly fun and like moving from fortified for fox was such a big difference in the sense that such a oh, new yeah. genre was a, it was awesome it was so i loved it uh, okay so this is this is when things actually start moving forward and again this is the green light trailer this is like when we way prior to what you guys see on on steam <laughs> right now look at those shovels i am very i'm very um uh, very happy with this with this trailer Looks so different. this shot was a pain in the ass to make but yeah, I love everybody when we recreated that shot oh my god everybody by the way there was no there was i think there was two factions i don't know if they were called warden and colonies at this point yeah they but were they all, they the were, same they were always called that but they looked the same <laughs> They visually, there was no difference between. Uh, 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 so you can see the enemies on the bottom. Uh, uh, sorry, the allies on the bottom, the enemies on the top. They looked exactly the same. They didn't even have a cult. Yeah, we didn't even like color switch them. <laughs> no, we didn't. There was nothing differentiating. It's just like this is your enemy. Speaking to the uh, naming of Warden and Colonials, there was almost an attempt to change it at one point, right? Like, yeah, we were, they were placeholder for a while. I, w- I, w- I will say, and th- again, this is going to make a lot of people mad, and I don't know if I should say it, but uh, Wardens was always going to stick. Colonials was on the table at one point. Um, but we decided but, to... Totally it. biased. <clears throat> totally so, biased. Something about this, this video, this was back when um, games 
had to be greenlit on Steam. And mm-hmm. to put things into perspective, like um, we we put this out there, and uh, we didn't know if anyone would even play the game um, at all. <laughs> so we put this out along with the combat prototype um, for for anyone who was part of the combat prototype. Um, this was this. It was almost like a deathmatch game that took place um, across a bridge. So it was the first bridge fight in the game. Um, and it was basically a 32 versus 32. One side had a base, or each side had a base, and you just had to try to push the other side back to their spawn point, and then you win if you destroyed it. Um, and I remember, uh, I think it was Blue Drake that streamed the game. And suddenly, mm-hmm. like the server was maxed out at sixty four, and it was really wild because I don't think the corpses had a despawn <laughs> timer that was sane. So there was like a million corpses on the bridge. <laughs> you can still find the videos if you go to YouTube. Just search for like <laughs> Foxhole Bridge Fight or something, and it's I just I like, have a link like, for it. In the if end. you would throw yeah. a grenade on the bridge, and there was the it was just a corpse bridge, and then your bodies would just go bridge, poof, yeah. and just like it'd be like raining corpses. It was awesome, but it was also like really bad. For, it's a pre- uh, yeah. precursor to Dead Harvest. Hey, HP, I'm surprised you didn't... There was a concept video um, that we had where we did a first... Uh, I think you had some screenshots of it, but the player like the player character was in snow, kind of crawling over, like sneaking up to an enemy uh, camp or something. Oh, the one I, that I, I made with I, the I put it in what I could find, Mark. I, yeah. I actually uh, I couldn't find a lot of things that I knew existed, but just, it was not on the okay. drive. If it's in your local, I, no, I, I don't do. even know where it is. <laughs> I just remember that Matt and I made that. I think well, I think guess that you were involved too, but um, I remember there was music and everything. It was really funny. So I yeah, I put the Revenant music on it. It was uh, oh, I actually that, posted that, that on Fun. This is the first, uh, we weren't doing a, a walkthrough of Before. the combat prototype uh, yes. because there was a lot of, because, yeah. This is they're, me, they're, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I was doing. so not feeling well when we made this. Yeah, this was 32 remember. versus 32. Yeah, this was a 32 versus 32 version of the game. And you can actually build, people still ask for this up till this day, but... Um, you can make these platforms in this version. Like you can build a little platform where you walked up and um, you're on a ledge. You can shoot down, and people still like you're. Hey, you're this, making- this is the whole foxhole. This, <laughs> that, this is the whole foxhole. That mesh was like was the basis still of like the resistance, uh, or sorry, the the frontier bases. You can see. Same footprint. I think we updated the materials and stuff at that one point in the mesh, but um, yeah, I think the actual mesh got updated eventually as well. Uh, at this point, these these boxes on the right they had like auto spawning items and yeah. stuff like that because we again like we were you have guys have no idea this was very nerve wracking for us to to make in the sense that this was what would uh either make or break the game we had yeah. no idea if yeah. anybody would be interested in it we we, we literally thought there's gonna be like three people five people at max playing this therefore is a dead game and yeah <laughs> absolutely and, and it was made by i think was it six or seven people at the time there it was no logistic at the time somebody's asking if there yeah. was logistic. no at this point no. there was no logistic. we we knew so here's the thing. This is how we did it. We knew that in the actual final game, we wanted logistics. So we have a very clear idea of what we wanted as a final game if the game uh, came to fruition, what we wanted the final game to be. We wanted like the whole, uh, uh, like uh, we said this a lot of time, the theater of war in which you have the logistics creating the assets, the, 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 the items, and then the people use those items to fight in front lines in a massive war. But we, we didn't even know if this whole concept of having a bunch of players versus a bunch of players fighting against each other would work. And that's why we made a, a prototype that was focused on the combat aspect and not on the logistics aspect. We also so, wanted to see if like the combat could be a little bit more tactical than like yeah. arcadey, like games like um uh Helldivers and and, and um 
Yeah, like those games are really, really arcadey because a lot. Of, I mean, right. uh, uh, top-down games have um, uh, a hi- uh, the the history is uh, re- like r- you know uh, Robotron 2048 or whatever. Uh, all those games are really action-packed and arcadey. So you're like, can we make like Rainbow Six maybe, <laughs> like, but with you know top-down or at least as close as possible? Like that was yeah. that was always in my mind, right? So um, <sighs> one mention from I saw Bear. Do you remember when one colonial won the war by sneaking past everyone with yeah. ten, with ten satchels? So, so like there was that, but there was also a bunch of other stuff even before that. Like you could just walk up to the enemy base and lob a bunch of frag grenades at their home base, and then you won. And that was that was, that was the like, where uh, you added walls. <laughs> yeah, it was really it was very strange. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to be clear, like. We, uh, I, I, I'm just talking uh, talking about this because I know that sometimes sometimes people uh, joke on the vision of the game and how we are destroying the game of the vision. But the reality is, uh, in 2016, when we were creating this combat prototype, we already had a pretty clear idea of what we wanted to make out of it. It's just we chose to focus on the combat of it first, but we had a pretty clear idea that we wanted. Uh, to have logistics and to have building and to have it to have it all that, but this combat didn't happen. <laughs> no, this was like this was like a a, a meat grinder. People hey, remember the us. red filter. Oh, oh yeah, the, God, so the red bad. filter. I don't know what I was thinking with that. I actually think it wasn't a filter. It was it was just um, bad lighting. But no, the red. We actually had mm-hmm. like a, a, a like a literally a red tint on top of the. Yeah, I, I think it was. The, I think it was a reflection from. It's hard to explain, but I, I think it, it was it was part of like the lighting model um, that we totally updated at like a, a later time. Um, and there's the machine. That. There's the heavy, the legacy heavy machine gun. Oh which, my god! Uh, the future DLC legacy heavy machine gun. <laughs> sure, <DLC. laughs> yeah. Pay five dollars to get the legacy. Or, yeah, HMG the skin. legacy uh, character model, legacy yeah. animations, and <laughs> legacy animation. There, just make some animations. <laughs> Actually, at this point, I'm pretty sure I was already doing animations for this. It was not just like, yeah, I think these are custom animations. No, you would have had point. to have done them at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These cool. are green, this is greenlit already. Yeah, for sure. And even this was still before me. Like I remember this. this. <laughs> yeah, this I remember watching you. it when I was hired. Uh, what else? What is what else is next? Oh, the first truck. The first <laughs> truck, man. Oh yeah, so I remember making this video, um, and it was my first video of this type that I made. It was back when I didn't even, um, I wasn't used to speaking, like recording myself for a gameplay video. Maybe I'll put it that way. And I did like four or five takes just because I hated the way that my voice sounded like everyone usually does. But um, this was interesting because this was the first truck in the game. And the next big, so the way that the development of the game worked out and and why there was a lot of like stressful changes throughout the years up until like, you know, about maybe about like a year and a so ago when we stopped making big changes is that there were, because there isn't a game that's like Foxhole, we have to answer these sort of like existential questions along the way. Like, is a top-down camera even going to work? The next question is, is someone even going to want to drive a truck? Because there's there's like, maybe there's some game out there, but I hadn't seen any at the time where players would actually be driving trucks um, to send supplies to the front. So there's this big question of like, is anyone even going to do it? Mm-hmm. And I remember, I still remember very vividly when we first put trucks in the game and we changed it so that you don't get your weapons automatically, you have to make them at the factory and then you bring to the front. And within like 10, 15 minutes of deploying that build and players coming in, players just, you know, like they got it right away. They just got the truck and it was a bit of a clusterfuck because there wasn't a lot of space around there. Um, but, but it was like a traffic jam. I remember Stefan was like, oh, this reminded me of like, like a weekend at the cottage where people are trying to like back their cars up and their cars are blocked. Trucks everyone was like, everyone was like honking at each other. Or I don't know if there, there was, was no, like, there was no horn. There was no honking. And, and for the horn, horn, but but it was definitely trucks people took, were definitely trucks took damage when they hit each other. Each other. 
<laughs> yeah. They did, but they so, did. So, oh my God. so, so, but, but it answered that existential question, right? It answered the question, and, and the answer was yes. Like, people definitely would uh, drive a truck to send supplies up to the front. Because up to that point, you know, there really was no game. Like, there's no game you could point at and be like, look, in this game, someone, a player, is the one who brings supplies to the front, not someone else, right? So it was an open question, right? Um, which is really interesting. And then the next question that we had was, well, this sucked. Someone brought to the front and like, um, they're sort of, or the next question was, people sometimes didn't even like abide by the model of bringing it to the front. They would just go straight to the factory to make their gun. So that's when we came up with the model of the crates. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to make it clear to the player that um, if you want to, if you want a gun, because people were treating the factories like a gun shop, right? They're like, I want to go to the gun shop, which is the factory, and I'm going to buy the gun that I want. And then I'm going to run to the front. And that was the incorrect workflow. So we changed it to crates after to make sure that the workflow was that um, there was a separation and the logistics player was the one that had to make the crates, right? Yeah. And then the player doesn't have to concern themselves with that shop. They just go to the base at the front, right? And like all this stuff, like it didn't exist, right? We just had to make it up. So, um, and, and that's why through the journey, a lot of stuff, it didn't work well, right? And and it and it sucked. Then we had to change it. Um, and you know, even up till now, there's obviously still things in the game that we have to fix. But a lot of it is because there isn't a blueprint. If we we're making like a Diablo clone or something, um, you know, at least you can point at something and be like, "This is the way that how it was done well, right?" Maybe we can look at it. Maybe we can change it. But at least there is a reference point. In this case, there wasn't. So that's where a lot of the kind of stressful changes came from right because we would mm -hmm. change the game to try to find the right way to do it and for players i understand it's stressful when when things change and and and, and um when you're used to something right so um yeah look, look at that uh, uh, the beautiful workshop that that 3d app <laughs> was amazing yeah. i just want to point out we used to be on weekly updates at this point um so we were doing just one update every week and i remember um mark being like hey can you like triple the size of the map <laughs> the update next week yeah. i was like you fucking kidding <laughs> like <it> was, <laughs> like uh but we, yeah we got it done <laughs> yeah it was just good times oh, these were weekly wars remember yeah, there are weekly like, updates we'd literally push see, weekly update. war life don't push updates every week if you're a game developer it's it was yeah. very you're, scary because now don't uh, do we, it because another thing is we couldn't even get enough players to fill a map right so the only way we could get enough players you know again like to test the concept, we need at least a hundred players at the minimum to even get a feeling of it, and we couldn't we we couldn't get that at the time. So the only way we could get close to that was to say, okay, everybody show up on a Saturday, log in, yeah. war starts at this time, um, and that was the only way we were to squeeze the hundred players. And each week, more and more showed up. First, it was sixty, and then seventy, and eventually mm -hmm. hundred, and and then one hundred twenty, and and every time we had to like. Um, you know, at some point we we're like, okay, we need a faster server, right? Now we're at hundred yeah. players. And, um, and I thought that was really cool because it built a small community, but a very tight knit community. Cause it will be the same people showing up, like the same hundred people showing up. And, um, maybe we'll get into that more in the community retrospective, but you know, it, I have really fond memories of like, just sort of that very small community and, and kind of like well, knowing everyone um stranger days the thing well, is exactly right. that stranger days is saying like that's the reason why dk always does saturday uh, uh yeah, cool. oh so we were responsible it, for for the warden weekend huh yeah <laughs> <laughs> interesting uh, so i remember when you hired me on you mentioned at one point that you would consider it a success when we got to 300 players concurrent yeah like when we when it grew from 100 <laughs> to 300 that yeah. was the benchmark to hit and then yeah uh, that was we cool. we we actually thought a thousand players would be like a fantasy a fantasy situation at the time i remember talking to outcast and i'd be like well if it's a thousand players we don't have to worry about anything because that's way beyond what we'd ever expect to get in this game we're we're happy with just like a 100 200 players another thing that was crazy about this time is we would literally be making builds on, on the Friday. So the, 
like the weekly war start on Saturday, we just scramble to make a build on the Friday, roll it out, and hope that there's not too many game breaking bugs. And then literally on the Saturday morning, we'd start the war and then kind of cross our fingers and hope that everything wasn't broken. Right? So I don't know so if it was, um, it was really crazy. Yeah, I don't know if uh, just uh, commenting on that. What's on the screen? I don't know if HB has it in here, but um, I used to uh, draw these maps, uh, our map designs on whiteboards. I had this big I don't whiteboard. Have it. Yeah, I had this big oh, whiteboard yeah, yeah, on the off yeah. in the office <clears throat> that was like dedicated for like maps. Um, it was like this like freestanding thing, and I would like draw. I'd put it on the table, and I would draw, and we'd actually like plan out like potential operations and stuff with like toy soldiers. We did that for the original six maps. Dude, and there then, was not even six maps in here. There was like one map. And then, uh, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, but the original six maps, um, we we did that for, and then, and then we got into a vibe of like, okay, we kind of know how the game works, and then so we, I still drew everything on whiteboards, but we didn't use the toy soldiers and shit after that. But uh, for I think up until the hex update, I used whiteboards, but then I we had to start working remotely a little bit more, so we moved on to. Well, to be fair, on the hex I like update, we also but... used whiteboard. But in a different we way. We did, but in a different way, yeah. Um, I yeah, like yeah. whiteboards. Also whiteboards little, are really This is when for... we were... I just wanted to move along a little bit because we're still in 2016. Yeah, let's move like along, five man. more Wait, years sweet. to go. Uh, I just want to point out when we were like... Uh, we, when we were actually expanding the map a little bit, which was a all, big deal. All I want to point out is the old faction logos on the map. I know. I love them. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll tell the story behind them. But... Uh, and then we went with starting to concept in the world map, right? Remember that 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 on the right there. Uh, so that that's pro before. This is after when we actually did uh, the changes to Deadlands. What is now Deadlands? Uh, and then the, on the right there is the original map of the world. There's a there's a bigger one. I don't know if you found that too. I don't think I did. There's an even, uh, there's an even expanded one. Um, I need yeah, to do but another that's, one. That's the, the <laughs> oldest one that I could find. Isn't that, that awesome. didn't Adam say like he had to hand place like every tree on the map at some point or something stupid? Uh, on the one on the left, everything was it was a mixture of like hand drawn and like some filters. On the the one on the right, I drew by hand. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's like completely hand drawn. Oh, this is Ooh. when we finally got Julian, right? Finally got me when we started doing, yeah, <laughs> started doing character stuff. I remember when I first got hired on to do this, I was trying to match the level, like the style of graphics in the game as it was, because I didn't know what I was doing at that point. Like, I didn't know what you guys expected. So I was trying to make characters kind of like as simplified and blocky as the world was, mm -hmm. as it existed. Mm. Um, and me and Matt went back and forth for a while on this character stuff. I remember that. Yeah, there were a bunch of other character designs that were even old, like, that came before this, before, like, this was yep. pretty well developed at this stage. This was like this there were... six pass. <laughs> uh-huh. No, I, and people I are saying the... that these are uniforms. These are not uniforms, just so you understand. When you see Jacket A and Jacket B, these are not different uniforms. This is us trying to figure out uh, which one is the best, better version of what yep. we want? Yeah. And I remember, like the stuff um, even before this, there was this whole like, what what the hell do they mean by World War II kept going like <laughs> as a theme? So I did, there was some like sci-fi influenced elements. There was some like Mad Max stuff going on, I and they were like, no, no, yeah. this is wrong. Stop doing. <laughs> there was there was some Warhammery stuff too. I there was some really. Warhammery stuff. Um, yeah. And yeah, they just like had but, to tell me to make it just. Uh, I think we settled on the World War Two plus ten percent is like the that's kind of the rule. rule. Yeah, yeah. You know what though? I miss like the Wilder. Cause, like back now, it's like way more established, and we're we kind know, of working. Yeah. yeah, we know what we're doing in this. <laughs> we know what we're doing, but back then, I kind of miss like Julian. We just make this thing. It's like, whoa, what is this? This is totally <laughs> from like, the left field, right? <laughs> and some crusty old motorcycles. Uh, yeah. Julian, oh, to yeah. this day, Julian and I talk about like the lore on the concepts and everything like for every pretty much everything that goes out that you guys see mm -hmm. it's kind of the same conversation it's just like way more like short because we know kind of what we're trying to do um, yep fun. yeah garrison how this this is proof the first time they were like we need more garrison or we were need talking garrisons. about garrison houses yeah. and i was again i was trying to match what i saw 
already that already existed that they'd done. Um, but then I, this is kind of the um, post-apocalyptic, like there's it's ramshackled and whatnot. So this is like a first attempt at trying to figure out what the hell houses looked like before, way before we redid everything. Oh, this is this is a big stream uh, eleven. <laughs> yeah, this is a world conquest. First world conquest. We we just got a fucking. Uh, one, one of, we got one of these guys in the middle of a table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, uh, did that, that happen? seventeen, April two thousand seventeen. Mark, what do you what do you think about world, first world conquest? Oh man, it was a shit show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was a complete shit show because border travel barely worked, and like we just slapped it together. And um, I remember there was all these terrible. Uh, edge cases we had it sort of out like when you went into a world if you died it didn't send you back like you would just keep on respawning at the border and it'll be really hard it really it'd be really like annoying and um and you can you could do like partisaning way easier than you can now um because you can just infinitely spawn in in like enemy region um it was so bad that we had to shut it down after like three world conquests um we had to shut it down it was terrible we went back to weekly wars for about a year actually until we came back around and um went went back to world conquest but in retrospective a part of me feels like that was a bit of a mistake um i feel like we should have stuck with it um even though the first implantation was complete trash um i i feel like we gave up on it too too quickly and as a result we kind of wasted time um because we were we to solve working, those problems anyway because <laughs> we ended up having to solve those problems anyways but we just all we did was push things back and you know i'm not to say that 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 year we did a lot of other things that um were very productive like we got tanks working um we got the first version of water working and so you know it wasn't like it was a waste but i guess i would say that um definitely wish that we had stuck with it Mm. Um, if if I could do it all over again, but you know it is what it is. So yeah. all these years later, and Matt's hats have gone from backwards to forwards. Yeah. I remember that this. I, I I mean I had glorious hair at that time, so <laughs> I cannot see why you would want to copy me. Uh, I remember that uh, we were always like turning them on and off, like Deadlands and the Shore, Upper Heartlands, while it was <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was nightmare, yeah. This is oh, that was before Weathered Expanse. I feel like Weathered Expanse has been in the game for forever. We're not even there yet. <laughs> uh, that, but that's kind of like when we went. Uh, then on July of that year, we went to early access, and I, I I'm this is of course starting we, as we get closer and closer to uh, uh, the current year. You guys are see- seeing a lot of this. Oh, Moito is it there from OBG? <laughs> a lot saw, of players for. Yeah, a lot of players. Uh, this was really cool, actually. I remember actually when filming this, we had so much help from the community to film this. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. It was, uh, of course, we have had a lot of the community help at this point, but this was the first time that I personally had a moment in which I could gather the whole community together uh, to do something. Like all these scenes that you're seeing. With like players shooting at each other and whatever, if it wasn't for the community, uh, it would not have happened. Period. It would have looked and robotic. That was a lot of fun. Just used, like, that was super fun. I it remember was, like doing that. really yeah. a lot, a lot of fun. I, I like I'm deeply, deeply thankful for for everybody. That, and oh, okay, I gotta talk about <laughs> That's this. That's the old half track, by that the way. Scene. That scene. That scene. That last scene. The, uh, the beach I, I, landing. I, Mark is gonna hate me for this. But this scene, this was not done with the community. And the reason was why, it's like, even though you see, I don't know how many players on screen, it's because uh, there was no naval at this point. And there was no uh, landing, landing craft at this point. It didn't exist. So we didn't want to leak into the community. So I had to do this scene on my own. And the landing craft <laughs> barely worked. Like it was like that. it was held together with 
God, like willpower and 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 wishful thinking. The landing crafts weren't even really done. Hey, I, no, I remember no, nothing of this. That's why like, they were this, floating. This was really funny because this was basically faked. We knew we, what we wanted. We we have a very clear vision of what we wanted. So it was like we know we'd want to do this. We were gonna do this, but it was <clears throat> faked in a way that it worked, and then like it forced our hands. Like okay, now we have to meet that that we've got to meet this uh, commitment that we did. And it was basically like a promise that we were making with the community. I was like, okay, we got to reach this. And we did. This was also the was first amazing. glimpse of Fahrenheit Coast. I mean, it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of funny you say that, that it was barely working because I would almost argue that when we did end up releasing it initially, it was also just barely working in <laughs> the <laughs> actual game itself, man. Like, I, I just, you guys, like it was in the community... like, What I want to say is that in this, in this <laughs> image right now, I yeah. was controlling every single one of the characters. So I had to record every, like, I had to play every single character and the barges uh, for everyone that is on screen and then load it in, record another person, load it in, record another person. So it was, it, it was a nightmare, but it, it was, it was so much fun. But, and- but I really like this because. Uh, I really like this because I think this is very emblematic of what we, what, like we have a very clear vision of where we want to go and we know we're going to get there and uh, we commit ourselves to doing it and we did it in the end, like they, they worked, you know, the, the, those, those, those landing APCs were like um, suicide runs pretty much because yeah. when they first came out, when you crossed, when you, <laughs> When you cross the river or or the sea, um, there was a fifty percent chance that ha- part way through you would just like you would just like fly off of it, right? So like <laughs> basically, <laughs> you would start you would start like a naval landing with an APC full of like six or seven people, and um, by the time you got there, there may be like four or five, right? And another funny thing at the beginning was that the barge, um, you. There's limits on that now, right? Before there was no limits on the barge. The first version of the barge, people had like 20 players on the barge. I remember people were scared to drive them because they didn't want to be responsible for the souls of 20 people. <laughs> and like because there were 20 people on these barges, it was such high stakes. Like if one of them blew up, it'd be like 20 people gone. Um, and they were just like there were like a lot of bugs, and and it was just but it but it was crazy. For those of you that were there back then, you know what I'm talking about those, those crazy barge, uh, uh, the crazy barge experiences, and all it would take is like one one person to like set off a frag grenade in the middle of it or something, and it'd be very terrible. So, does anyone remember the uh, initial tests for the APC and the water landing stuff? Oh my god! I just remember, I just remember like Casper like yelling at people. <laughs> Like that's my memory. So is this Casper like yelling at everybody to try to get everybody organized, and it was just like. Because it was so hard. <laughs> the, 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 uh, I'll the tell beach you guys, landing, landing yeah. beach landing stuff is, is at way least, easier now. <laughs> it's it way easier now. But from my from my perspective, uh, as 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 one of the people who worked very closely on that system, it was really hard to do. <laughs> like I think it's gone through three iterations, just trying to make yeah. it like foolproof as much as possible. Like it it was really really hard. Uh, to do uh, way harder than we thought we thought it was going to be easy <laughs> and it wasn't at all so i remember trying to like we had a conversation about keeping that top secret literally the end of the trailer mm-hmm. because that was supposed to be the surprise for all the like yeah. vets at that point like even they weren't supposed to know because they were supposed to be surprised by it yeah I don't know. yeah no it was it was a it was a it was a huge deal uh keeping that like under wraps because we were having help from the community on fil- on filming and we wanted I, I remember having the conversation of like okay they helped us uh film this and there's all this cool new stuff that i already know of what can we do that they don't know so that they also have a little nugget of like cool tech that they have to uh, uh that they get to look forward to that they haven't tried yet I, I quite remember that, uh, and that was our first uh, naval vehicle. Fun fact: that sand texture was just the 
snow texture turned yellow. I remember you saying me that. I was like so surprised. I loved it. You remember um, that? Uh, we island. changed it, but... yeah, the island on that. There was yeah. the original point where some of it was supposed to be sunken. Yeah, it's like it was like could, underwater. Still oh, build fossils under the water. <laughs> oh, the old gunboats. <laughs> yeah, old gunboats. I oh, loved the... this concept, but it caused so many problems. So much trouble. Yeah. And, oh, we can finally explain the gunboat and the. <laughs> Go for it. The you no do that, uh, Julian. I'm sorry. I'm listening to. Uh, I'm hearing some. You cut out. Yeah, HP, we <laughs> but... lost you. No, Mark, we, we, like, people are still bug us about the open deck gunboats, right? So, I like the open deck. Um, uh -huh. It caused a lot of problems at the time, but you know what? I think that the game is robust enough now that I want to go back to that at some point. I think we cool. need to have a giant naval update at some point. I, I really like uh, being able to walk around on a boat. There's something about it. It feels really good. <laughs> um, I think the community agrees. I think, you know... Uh huh. Just know that there was a, a lot of technical problems with that boat, that it caused a lot of headaches, and that's why it got um, its deck shrunk. <laughs> yes, but one, one fun factor, fact, fact, not factor, one fun fact is that the, the animations on that um, rear turret, didn't we just recently use that for something else, Julian? I remember uh, we were coming up with some of these things, and we were like, hey, let's just... That not important. Something. You know what? It's not important. <laughs> uh, isn't that the? Um, it's the same art as the art, original artillery or howitzer animations for that howitzer guy, isn't it? Or something. Stuff got reused. Mm -hmm. is the, yeah, yeah. It, but I, the, doing this stuff taught us a lot as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this just this screenshot is really exciting because like I just feel that naval is one of those things that. We can't just like internally on the team. We can't stop thinking about it and like talking about it just because Max won't shut up about it. Max won't shut up about it because we know that like it's going to be a big part of the game at some point. Um, just like how in the past you saw there were things that weren't part of the game. World Conquest was really small, and now World Conquest is huge. In the same way, I see like the naval game similarly. Like we have just a very small seed of it now, and I think there's like just possibilities right are are just huge we're, we're um, talking about the future too much this is about the past yeah i know You're right, on that note right. hp but the past note. is the future Future's what is the past. the one world revamp oh yeah. Ooh, baby i read the the skirmish oh, model. Yeah, I remember this, this. This. oh boy yeah this was a broken idea <laughs> terrible yeah this was a flawless idea it seemed good at the time yeah, so this was a version of Conquest that we we're trying to figure out how we could um, scale to support other, like more players beyond what the Conquest could fit itself. So we came up with this idea that you can play in these skirmishes um, on these on these like islands, and these will be like smaller matches, and then through that you get supply drops that go into the Conquest. But I think this was like. You know, another one of those, I would almost call it like a bit of um, an unnecessary, um, you know, I think in it, I don't want to say waste of time because we learned that, you know, it was bad to go off on a tangent like this, but it was a tangent. I think that's the best way to, to put it. And I, you know, some, you know, some of the criticisms that, I've heard over the years of like, oh, we sometimes go in circles and then we do something. You know, I think there's some truth to it. I do think that um, we should have been more focused and we should have just, at this point, not even thought about this and should have just been like, everything always needs to be in the same world, right? Mm -hmm. um, no no separate skirmishes. And, you know, that was like an honest mistake, right? There's honestly no other way to put it. It was a bad idea, right? Um, and, and like, you know, I... We we did the bad idea, and then um, realized that you know again that was a bit of a waste of time. Um, we often use a term called like the naive approach, which is like yeah. the first thing that you think of, or or one of the first things that you kind of gravitate towards. And, and and this strikes me as based on where we were at, as like that sort of approach. It's like, well, 
We have all these skirmish. Like, let's tie all the things we have together. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. But see, I think this is one of those things, Matt, where um, you know, all jokes aside, there wasn't enough of a enough of the vision <laughs> in this, right? Because this was not the vision, right? This was us trying to make it work practically instead of doing what needed to be done, which was yeah. that everything should be a hexagon, everything should be attached. Um, and that's where like we walked away from the vision, right? Yeah, um, and, growing yeah, pain. So. It, it, yeah, and you see a lot of that in in the development. It's just that happens just, in games all the time. You guys just yeah. saw it all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you guys. The difference. Yeah. <laughs> this happened in Fortified as well. Actually, just to kind of talk about that for a second, because some yeah. of the same stuff happened. It, it's in game development. You have to you have to put stuff on the plate in order to understand that it tastes bad. Like you know, you know that's true, Matt. But at the same time, to to have a bit of self criticism, and this is more criticism on myself, right? rather than the team, I do feel like in the future, there could have been steps that we didn't, like, these tangents, we could have, we can't avoid them in the future, right? That's not to say it wasn't a valuable, because just learning that we shouldn't do this, right, um, is a good reason to have gone through it itself, because you learn. But, uh, you know, I do think that I would like to do things a bit more efficiently for a future project. That doesn't mean we're not going to not make mistakes. We're not going to, you know, try things out and fail and then fix it. Mm-hmm. But I think some of these, I would, I think we can do like, let's say, if I put a number on it, 25% more mm-hmm. efficient. <laughs> uh, personally, I, I, I see this, uh, I remember us talking about this a little bit as well uh, around this time when we had a surge of players and we were like all scrambling to see like what were the reasons. Uh, like how could it fit more people? That's why we had skirmish instances and stuff like that. Uh, uh, it, it, I think it's uh, it's all about the maturity that we had. We didn't, we had never dealt with this kind of issue before. Yeah, like this this scaling issue, and 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 we were reaction in, in a certain ways. We were very reactionary to what was happening to the community and like the, this influx of players and stuff like that, and we lost. We we did lose ourselves a little bit in in, in trying to to be yeah. reactionary to that. Mm-hmm. I think nowadays, because we are more mature as developers, even if we are immature in our own personal life, um, <laughs> speak for uh, your damn self. <laughs> will will we ever reach out to those islands though out on the Never. map again? With a uh, possible... but because of that, we 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 can foresee uh, issues coming uh, much much further, and we yeah. can prepare, and we suffered through that. So even though it might, this might not have been the correct solution, uh, I think it was an important one for, as a as, as a developer in a development yeah. perspective, it, yeah. to or in order to be able to uh, do less shit. You know? I have a question. Yes. Who decided that colonials get to win the war in this demo? In this I was. Demo. I was the one. This was you actually <laughs> just. Uh, I was trying. I I was just trying to visualize uh, because it was. This whole skirmish instancing thing was very complicated, and I think Mark told me, "Hey, can we do something to visualize that?" Mm-hmm. I think this is where this little video came about, and I was just trying to showcase how the whole process would 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 come about, like how does it work? I think that's what it was. This also, video. HP is colonial biased. That's yeah, I am hundred percent neutral. Oh boy, I, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm a bi faction man. These concepts they... look great, by the way, Julian. Thanks. Yeah, I love. I this. spent a. I, I remember doing a big page of rocket designs for this rocket to get it right. Um, kind of reminds me of the fortified rocket, just less cartoony. You... <laughs> I think that was the. Uh, that was kind of like the R two was similar, right? <clears throat> yep. Uh, is this a static player built fuel tank, Mark? Is that fine? <laughs> Is this, is this what we're showing off right now? Hey, I thought we're not talking about the future, man. Right, like, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I, I went to town on the rocket stuff because I knew it was going to be important. Uh, okay, so this is the first concept of uh, the tech tree. As you can see, there was a lot of placeholder shit stuff. I remember it, it might not have been this image, but players were like di- trying to dissect the very first like images that we showed of what a tech tree might be. And they were trying to guess like we grabbed like silhouettes of real 
military vehicle? No, this was after because what I did is <laughs> like when we actually were announcing Tech Tree, yeah. Um, uh, I, I had to showcase, right? Yep. So what I did is that I, I, uh, they were trying to. I knew they were going to do that with the silhouette. So what I did is that I, I put a bunch of vehicles yep. like kit bashed on top of each other yep. just to screw the players. A whole, a whole so bunch of fun. nothing. It, it mean it meant nothing. It was it was so much fun. Yeah, I made that little spark plug thing. <laughs> By the way, it's like yeah, we used that we used that asset. I like, think there's uh, like the beginning. there's like four models that I actually made in Foxhole, and that's one of them. <laughs> You made the starter pistol too, right? I made the starter pistol, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> oh, this is when things get interesting. Oh shit. Uh, players are going to hate us for, to rem- that we remind them of this. They're going to hate us for it. There was a lot of players who were involved in in helping us uh, sort this out though as well, yeah. so the oh, combat yeah. prototype, the town combat prototype. The uh, the the town revamp. Yeah. Is- yeah. This was a big deal for us because we had Speech, like these yeah. open maps and we had towns, but it didn't feel like towns. I think that was the main issue. And yep. we were like, well, we want to get we closer to, to that. Exactly. Like we wanted to, we wanted to have a more oppressive feeling of fighting in a town. Uh, especially, especially was, some of the more densely populated areas. Uh, uh, absolutely. Call them and like a, a, big a, deal. A, a, a house tunnel. That was like, so, something that we used a lot um, that we wanted to create. Um, this was, I'm so glad you found a video. I could never yeah, find yeah. a video of this. Um, so this Visual. was this was um, uh, Clapville, um, <laughs> this town. Um, and there was a lot of crazy ideas uh, that Anthony and I, a lot of this was like Anthony and I, and we just said, let's figure out what's the craziest shit that we can come up with. Uh, that 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 might work, and we just threw it all at the wall and just tried to see. We had like bridges between t- t- houses. We had three, four story houses, um, all sorts of stuff. And uh... yeah, I think that the biggest goal behind this was um, we at the time the towns didn't feel like towns. Like it felt very sparse. It was just the same two garrison. I think there was two garrison house types stamped stamped all over the place um but we didn't get the density that we wanted and we didn't get Mm -hmm. that that feel of a town so we did a series of uh town prototype tests um and the community was very helpful with that they they um helped us through um evaluating some of these and there were some you know i think this is like the classic example of like test something out and and then leave behind what didn't work right? yeah like there there is some stuff like we got a lot of feedback from from people too about like you know the houses were just like no one was using them like the two stories and stuff that was like the biggest thing it was that was really disappointing in in this particular scenario is like they were so hard to use because of the camera angle and, and there's a whole bunch of other reasons yeah. that they just didn't get used and so when we made changes towards what we now have in game they got used a lot more and so that that was a really good testing for us um because we saw a lot of like organic uh behavior because we were just basically having combat tests and being like use the town like here's mm-hmm. the here's a town go go fight each other um and so it was really really good feedback just to watch what players are doing and, and how they're interacting yeah i remember it was a lot of fun <laughs> I remember us settling on the kind of second story was in ruined houses, like in all the rubble, because we effectively took the roof off at that point yeah. and opened it up and you could see it the whole time. So yeah. it was like they use it when they see it. And I don't know, it just it worked. Yeah, we also we also changed things where like in, in, in future versions of this, uh, this was like one of the first versions in future versions yeah. of this, we change it so that like. Um, when you destroy a house, it actually changes the collisions and what's available. Maybe it was only one story before, oh, yeah. but then when you destroy it, and then it's like second story, and, and so a lot of that stuff evolved to what is in the game now. To yeah. simplify Absolutely. it down to the best. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I right, think yeah, yeah. We're going to uh, end of October, getting to the end of October. I, this was a big deal. I don't know if it was a big deal for you guys, but cool. it was a huge deal for me. Like. Personally. You're gonna um, <laughs> you're gonna bring about 
a, a huge wave of just bring back this event. <laughs> the comments. This yeah. event doesn't it's exist. It's fine. <laughs> it's bring fine. It back. Uh, okay, this was, so this was really fun to work on. Um, that's what I'm going to say about this it. This was so, super fun. So yeah. this was we were already working on Foxhole for more than two years at this point, like longer if you consider pre pre production. Um, and we were thinking like, how can we make something fun? So we had we kind of like pose ourselves a challenge in which uh, we had basically one week. It was like, okay, we're going to take one week off from developing the real game and we're going to do something just to relax and something fun. What can we put together in one week? It took about a week and a half almost to... It was not exactly one week because between like just taking like development from other sides. But that's, that's why Dead Harvest exists in general. It's literally every time we do that harvest is us blowing off steam. And we were tired. It is, yeah. yeah, it's 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 us trying to have it is fun the, in the game. It's definitely we we try to make it a win win thing, but I'm not gonna lie, it is that like, man, let's do something fun. So it's a bit of a selfish thing Absolutely. as well for us. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And uh that harvest is exactly that. Um so we came up with this idea of hey, the the wardens and the colonials are gonna uh join together against a, what is tech was basically uh counts as a third faction which in the case were the undead the cursed yeah um and i know people are gonna say oh that harvest is not like that anymore you gotta bring that harvest back uh, the reality is this at this point in development you guys can see how much the game has changed since this point right uh, the reality is that, like at this point, there was a lot of flexibility in the engine, in the code, in the development time for us to do these crazy sweeping changes. We made like a whole new game mode for that. It, it was basically that. Um, uh, and you're not, realistically, you're never going to see that harvest like this again. Just let's put it out there. The game is way more mature. We can't just go fucking around. Pardon my French. <laughs> with uh, the code anymore at this at this point it's like it's just way too big way too complex right but this was what that harvest was it was us we're still it trying just... to cap we're still trying to here's the thing the re every time you see that harvest and you, i'm just gonna bring this up right now i'm not gonna bring up that harvest again in this sure. perspective but every time you see that harvest even the new ones is us just like how can we make a fun mode like something that we think would be cool. So in the last day, that harvest, it was like, hey, we want the different, the different uh, uh, curse to have like different power-ups and stuff like that that we didn't get to put in the previous one. And that is fun for us. That is about a week worth of development time, which is all that we can afford. And by and by fun, HP means like it gives the artist like a chance to flex some skills that we don't normally get to. Like yes. for instance, like on my end, like I get to do like fantasy stuff or you know the cool like gurgly sound effects and stuff that I don't normally Blood. I'll never be able to do in uh, normal Foxhole just because it's not the game. Uh, so it is a fun. It's just a fun little break from you know what we're normally working on to have have something different to uh, different challenge um because it is it is really it's actually like really hard we make these in really really short timelines so we have to put stuff together fast like you know it, it's like uh julian gets to design a mech that would fit in foxhole man that's not something rigging you know. the mech and animating it is so much fun like mm, <laughs> i love it like i just love it so Wasn't that's that's where harvest uh, that harvest comes from and i think it was a big deal not because uh, it, it was a huge impact on the community or, or in the game there was basically no impact we were introduced we, we made a mistake of introducing this the sniper rifle i honestly think that in hindsight the sniper introducing the sniper rifle in the dead harvest was a was a mistake because i don't think we should ever introduce anything that is in the proper game in that harvest that's why we you see guys see max and stuff like that um. but but i think it's it's just it was for the for the developers, it was a nice uh, break in the pace of the development time, and it, it was a lot of fun. Go on. All, James, I, yeah, all I wanted to say was, wasn't it also a nightmare to program to make the two sides ally for like 
a week's and event like, and like wasn't there like action? a headache for <laughs> yes oh yeah and it's not <laughs> just it's not just that but it's all the bugs it introduces into the code base yeah as well right and yeah. that's the why you don't see that anymore yeah because it it, it it's just too much like with the Let's put it this way. There's so many things in the code that rely on you knowing which faction you are on. Like, so many things. So every time that you do something that is trying to take it away from that, uh, it, it, it creates a huge headache for anybody developing it. All right. Now that we made everyone sad, yeah, what's the next thing we can sad. move on to? <laughs> Let's oh, make no. them even more sad. <laughs> let's let's rip their heart out. Here is their hearts up. Uh, oh my god, this had to be the next one. HP. Right? <laughs> Guess they're, what? They're they're going going HP, you know, HP, HP, I got you on this one. So just putting it out there, battle tanks are never coming back ever. Are, are you sure? What? Are you just sure? kidding? <laughs> just kidding. It wasn't you got me. Uh huh. <laughs> You know, you know they're just gonna clip that part yeah, people out. People are gonna like take that, that one clip. <laughs> <laughs> good. You guys actually Money. better do it. It's a really good opportunity. Yeah. No, it, I, I, I introduced this one because I, it's an important piece of Foxhole history. It was a big deal for us to develop this like larger machines. Uh, uh, but the reality is that just like in a way, just like uh, the the original gunboat, uh, it doesn't fit right now as the game it is right now and that's why you don't see it in the game right now like uh, like <laughs> sometimes you have to sometimes you have to make things and test them and then you learn from it it doesn't mean they're not coming back it's got to reevaluate <laughs> unless it's right. dev harvest season 1 that's the that only harvest thing. season 1 is not coming back this is not a joke that harvest season 1 is not I read back. chat it's hilarious man um, um. it, it uh, Oh, sorry, Julian, I'll let you go. No, it's okay. I was just going to speak to, I'd mentioned a couple times in some dev blogs that um, there was a few proportional changes that actually had some lore impact in the game. But um, at first, the Warden battle tank was significantly thinner than the Colonial one. And I remember Mark didn't like it at all. Just, like, it just, it didn't feel substantial in any given way. Like, it didn't feel like they were getting something uh, equal to the Wait colonials. A minute. back when we were still doing symmetric. I thought stuff. I don't care about the wardens. Yeah, he didn't care about the wardens. <laughs> or did, I don't know. Um, I, sorry. But I, I remember that we ended up wide, like kind of matching the footprint of the two and kind of the mass of the two in game. But then that had an impact on Matt and the lore writing when he came to writing the lore for the two vehicles. Because he was like, these two things are identical. Like, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> That's been uh, a chat. Let, let me just say that's hard <laughs> to deal uh, with. I'm I, actually so glad things are asymmetrical right now. <laughs> uh, me too. I actually I love the concept, uh, the, the just the art on the concept. Like mm -hmm. I think I honestly think that Julian, you as a concept artist, you 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 you, you develop a lot with the with the game as well. Yep, you can actually and, uh, see it. It's like a it's like a poof, yeah. Just like you look can see the at the quality of of like how much more like. I, I would say in control of mm -hmm. what Foxhole looks like you are when you're making this concept. You can, like, and I think these cool. are like the first ones that are like really grab it. It's pretty cool to see it reflected in the game too as, as it goes along. Like even everything from like just all the all, everything kind of tightening up and, and, and the light, even the lighting changed and we re yep. reworked some textures yeah. to make it all fit. Like there's a lot behind the scenes that like sometimes we don't even like mention, which is stupid. We should always mention it. But like, um, uh, you know, Anthony and I made a lot of just like little tweaks constantly while we were while all this stuff was happening over these years, just to kind of bring it closer and closer and closer to uh, what you see in these concepts. But yeah, that's totally a side effect of figuring out what the hell we're doing. Like now, it, the, the earlier stuff is way looser and way more um, bad for lack of a better term, because I had no idea what the factions looked like. I had no mm -hmm. idea what the world looked like when I first got hired and we were just experimenting and stuff. So for sure. like as time goes on, I can just refine it and kind of do it without thinking faster. Cause I already know what the hell it looks like. You know um, so yeah. <laughs> you know, what's really weird about watching this footage is like, I remember what I was like listening to while I made some of these areas. It's really this weird. Is the, 
<laughs> this was the town. This the, I, this this has like the world redesigned, and okay. I honestly believe that it was because Julian was there. Uh, actually, like he was more comfortable in his role as a concept artist for the game, and we were more comfortable. We as artists were more comfortable into taking those and translating them into what is Foxhole yep. per se. Uh, that uh, this redesign really showcased uh, how beautiful foxhole can be adam mm-hmm. adam and i also had help at this point in in max and uh, anthony so, yeah uh, <laughs> without that yep. i don't know like it, it would have been impossible for like two people to do all that i think this is this was like the world <laughs> revamp was like anthony's giant impact on the game yeah it's like and me max. and him this, don't, yeah. don't discredit max as well. oh absolutely um max we, was huge, we spent huge. a while just figuring out what the hell a house looked like and then that, like, it's like once we nailed down the houses, I literally at that point, I would just be like, "Hey, Anthony, here's a sketch," and he could, he knew like what the crappy lines in the sketch meant, yeah, and then yeah. he could just go from there. Rip, rip, Anthony. Um, yeah. Oh. They, uh, one of the things. May he rest in peace. One of the one of the little like uh, <laughs> things that some players might remember is I would leave all these notes around for Max in the map, and sometimes we forgot to delete them, so they would just be like detail this it would be this like floating text and it was like in the dev branch and stuff i think one of them like stuck around for like a couple of updates good good this times was the last, <laughs> this was the last like trailer that we made hp and i just remember these trailers are just so like there's so much work it's <laughs> like each each scene is scrutinized and and um you know what i am the uh i Myself to HB is like Julian to the modelers. Like I, I just nitpick every small thing, and I go back to HB. And my strategy is the way: how angry is he gonna be? Because <laughs> I'm coming back to him for like the third time just to tweak one small thing. <laughs> and I have to approach it and be like, "Well, you know, HB, maybe we can do this, but I got you like a slushy too. Here you go." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, did Don't I ever get dead. That, re- that angry? You know, just you throwing didn't. things. Throwing you didn't things. get angry. <laughs> no, but, but it was always like, I myself am just kind of never satisfied with, with like, I always feel like we can tweak something a bit more in the trailer just to focus on something. So part of me is happy that we don't, um, we, we haven't done a trailer in a long time because I know when I we mean. do the next one, it's going to be like, Oh, it's very, it's going to be very mm-hmm. stressful, right? So. Gonna, to so. make the point of that, to make Mark's point about me, there's internal memes about me from the rest of the modelers. That, like <laughs> me and giving critiques. I there's, know. Yeah, we have some internal memes going around. We're like, I or should like, probably have <laughs> added some of those. <laughs> or like a modeler will post something and I'll be like, nah, you got to redo it <laughs> because there's like some lore inconsistency. Like that yep. happens a lot. It's it, that, you know, the no, game right. development's a really multifaceted, like. Thing. You know what, though? You know what, though, Julian? I am so glad that um, you put that much effort into it because I think it matters. Like mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, when. Um, you know, it might seem it might seem like a small thing, like, hey, just move this bolt over on this yep. model. And it's like, why do I have to move the bolt? But I think all the little things that you don't notice as a whole, it does affect the whole, it, yep. if that makes sense, right? And and it just makes it I feel like when you started caring about that much, like the everything started looking much better in the game. And, mm-hmm. and you know, I think yeah. it's super important. So, so speaking Mark, of do you, do you wanna... I didn't Oh, I was gonna say. Speaking of, I didn't do the. I designed the logos, but I think Adam actually. Yeah. yeah. He, did, he did the Adam. character art, but Adam did cool. the. Yeah, Adam yeah I just wanna. I just wanna point out that uh, all the crappy UI that you guys <laughs> saw up until now, like the like the the, sh- the fuzzy uh, the fuzzy UI, this was all me. And then when UI actually got good, this is all Adam. So <laughs> all props to Adam because he worked miracles. Uh, this Mark. is. I wanted to include this because this is. I th- I thought it was really cool. Um, this is uh, us concepting. Uh, you choosing your faction, and uh, and some people might say, oh, some of these are actually prettier, or some of them are like uh, more cool looking than than the one that we have right now. But the reality is, is that when you are choosing something like that, 
uh, we have to figure out what is the most uh, clear way for players to understand what they are getting into. And uh, in the end, we decided to go with, uh, in-game, in-game looks of it because it is more recognizing. It's the thing that they're going to connect right away as soon as they click after the screen. Uh, they wouldn't connect with just a symbol or they wouldn't connect with just uh, a concept art. And that's mainly the reason, even though some of them, like uh, somebody mentioned, oh, I love the bottom right one. It's like visually, I think the bottom right one is amazing or even the bottom left one. Adam did a great job uh, with all of them. Uh, fantastic job. But gameplay wise, it's actually per- preferable for you to actually go with something that uh, will connect the players with what they do what they see in game. There was a there was a lot. This was a really uh, heavy point of discussion as well. This one it was. This was a this, this was a lot. Um, yeah, I wasn't. Oh, that's like a- I, I wasn't a fan of the physical logos because we weren't using that style in any other part of the game. Um, we, which is why in the end, um, I really just felt like settling on an actual screenshot. Like, let's show. Hey, let's show players what they're gonna be. Let's actually mm-hmm. show them what they're going to be, um, as opposed to like these sort of graphical, uh, more abstracted logos. Maybe I'll say right. Mm-hmm. So. Um, Siberian Peppers asked, "Where were those screenshots taken?" Okay, so one of the things you guys got to understand. Um, uh, I'm going to blow smoke up Anthony's ass again. Now, Anthony just had this weird ability to take really good screenshots. I don't know what <laughs> magic that he had, but he was just really good at taking screenshots. So he he took these screenshots. I don't know. I don't know how he. I think he might have like posed some, but I'm not really sure. Like some of the, I think he I might have like him. built some of the environment just to take the screenshot. He was really, really good at that stuff. Yeah, I remember him altering. Like he would go into a map and then he would like take a screenshot. It's like ah, oh, I don't like it very much. And then he would like just bring in like a fence just so you have mm-hmm. some like diagonal. And then he would take the screenshot. So it's not. It might not be a, like a completely real place to be honest. So the BT is not a lie, but the environment is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to I wanted to uh, this is all about World Conquest 2.0 because this was a big big shift for the game as a whole. Uh like having all these world all these uh maps connected like I I cannot understate it, uh, like overstate it enough. Like this is this is a big deal. There uh, was four four uh people who worked on this. Um, yeah. on the art side alone. <laughs> just um, on, just the on the art, art side. Never mind the programming side, which was a lot of work. Um, and H- HB and I, like HB normally doesn't work on map stuff, but uh, even he worked on some of this. Uh... Yeah. See how so desperate of... map was? <laughs> so one, <laughs> I, so one of the things... Context, that... I've worked with HB for like ever. So I, you know, <laughs> I, I he's, he's, he's being mean, but I would choose HB all the time. So one of the things that like we had to do was um, so the, this is not something that the Unreal Engine supports like out of the box, especially not in the way that we were doing it. So we actually had to make custom tools. So what you're seeing there at the bottom left corner is a custom tool that we made just for just for Foxhole, so that we can um, we can arrange the world in hexagons, right? So this is like a tool that we developed to help to like help the map designers. Right, so it's like that. You know, what's cra- one crazy thing, Matt, is like, um, we were able to move a lot faster before because the game was smaller and we were more okay with. There were less players playing the game, and we were more more okay with sort of breaking things a lot more than we are now because now the game is a bit more like mature. But we did we accomplished so much. Um, just in terms of the technical and the content of putting that one world together was just insane. Like, mm-hmm. like the like the hexagon world. I don't even know how we got that done. Because um, now, when we do something, the game is so much bigger. We have to consider so many things, right? But back then, um, you know, we didn't. There wasn't as much of that weight on us, so we could change things uh, more easily. And it just it blows my mind how much the fact that we put together that entire hex world in, in that time, in that amount of time is just completely, completely bonkers. Right? I have a production philosophy, which maybe one day we yeah. can get into like in more detail. I won't do it today, 
um but uh but but that's but that's a big part of like scheduling is like also like a whole other part of game development that no one talks about because it's like kind of boring but um that's how you get something like this done there's always a way it's just you have to find out but also a lot of hard work like i said we had four like map designers on this um this was by far the largest project that like uh i kind of had to oversee and it was really really hard and all those guys worked really really hard on this i wonder if i got if i included a picture that i wanted to include on on second maybe yeah so this is us figuring shit out this is matt figuring shit out right like all where everything was going to go which turned out to be what you see as world conquest right but you can see the difference between a bunch of stuff moved around i think yeah i think i drew that crappy picture yeah i think you, i think you drew this because you were like because you were like this was late actually there's a whole bunch of other ones there's like yeah. Ooh, between me and max and mark we've done we did a lot of these um this is one of the later ones i think just is part of like a meeting or something i think I wanna yeah wanna these go. were the early i remember when i was thinking about how this should work and at one point there was this um there was a, a tangent right you know again going back to that learning from the tangent and i stopped myself from going down that because the tangent was maybe there should be another large separate like island right and that will help us with some scaling thing. But due to that lesson we learned like early on, let let let's not do that. Let's just put everything all in one world. Um, I I kind of was able to avoid that tangent this time around, and I was just like, you know what? Let's not let's not do that. Let's just do it this way. And one of the biggest things that now in retrospect works, but back then was like very very scary. Um, was getting rid of the port bases, right? <laughs> so um, this was a big deal because prior to this version of World Conquest, uh, players had these invincible fortresses in the world that you can always fall back to and, and they couldn't be destroyed. So just imagine something like Heartlands or even something like Longstone where you couldn't destroy it. There was an invincible wall around it. They were pretty much like um, invincible turrets and you couldn't ever get near it. and removing those out of the world was very scary because they'd be like, okay, well, what happens? You have to go back to the home region. Um, there was all these questions that we had to answer, but the, this is one of those times where, you know, where like the vision was the guiding hand in this. It's like the vision did, you know, it kind of like dictated that we had to take this risk, right? And it's very scary taking that risk because you could break the game, right? Um, and I think that, you know... It took a little um, bit of shakedown, but... Even yeah. though, mm-hmm. you know, even though everybody, you know, even though this, this particular update was extremely polarizing, I think the one thing that wasn't polarizing that people were 100% on board with in the end when all the smoke cleared was that we got rid of the port bases. Like, I think that was like the, that was like mm-hmm. the unanimous. That was huge. Yeah. That was a good thing. I'm glad you guys did it because we hated it, right? Um, but, but yeah, it's, it makes me so happy that, you know, we did it. And now we are like many years later, um, only, only two years. <laughs> Two years, yeah. Just, yep. just man, that seems like so so long ago. But um, imagine what the game would have been if we hadn't taken that risk, right? If we hadn't done that, living with poor bases till now, just it would have been shit. I would have hated it, right? Um, and I think you, the game would have been worse. Speaking of the vision, do you remember the time that me and Matt talked about getting you to wear a shirt of Vision from the MCU on a stream? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you spoiled we... it. I was going to do that in the next year. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Uh, actually, I do. Somebody just... has a uh, Space Marine Breakdown had a really good question. Like, could, can one day explain what the vision you always talks about? Like, yeah, what so is like the vision? vision. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, you know, vision is super important. Um, it's always been important. And the what vision is has... our vision. Yeah, so like, um, so the vision, so, okay. The vision goes back to the beginning of the project, right? And it was literally born on that day that I was saying when Alex and I thought about this concept, right? And um, what it is, is people make a big deal of it, but it's just it's just goals, right? Yeah. Like, that's all it is. It's like, you make a movie, you know, you have a goal. This is what I want the movie to be about. And that, and that goal, those goals 
is not something everyone is going to agree on, right? If you want to make a horror movie a specific way, and you're saying, okay, I want these, this is what the horror movie is going to be about, and someone wanted a comedy, well, you know, that's not part of the goals. It's just like your own life. Like, I set my goal. I want to do this in life. If you don't have a, you know, that's the thing I don't understand, right? It's like, you know, for, for when people say, when, when, um, when people talk about the vision in a negative light, it's just so funny because that's like saying, just don't have goals. Just don't have goals in life, right? Just walk around, do random things, um, and don't even have a, don't even have a good direction, right? So all that is, right, is here's the goals. Very simple, right? We want to make a, a persistent world game. Every player, every player is a soldier. They're all working together. Um, we want it to have like a sandbox feel. We want it to be tactile. We don't want it to be like artificial. It shouldn't be a stats-based game. It should be a tactile sandbox game as much as we can, right? Um, it it needs to be about players working together as opposed to you going off on your own and playing solo. And there's just a, there's just a list of like this is the goals of the game, right? And I think that's, it's as simple as that, right? So it's like, it's funny when it gets more complicated than that because it's like, it's just goals. Right? <laughs> it boils down to like, there's like, we have like a single um, PowerPoint page that has yeah. like the questions and ant, like, do we want it to be A or B? And then we choose A, or we cho- it was already chosen. Right? Yeah. yeah. If, if there's a dilemma, it? we lean into the direction of our design philosophies. Yes, Lord exactly. Commander said and, exactly that. Oh, and yeah. I think that and uh, and I think that the only difference we say like a design philosophy and is that design philosophy is kind of like uh the way you get there uh and the the, the the vision is like what is our end goal and our end goal in our case is uh a multiplayer game in which you have a, this large scale war in which you are just a cognitive machine and everything is done by other players and everything is like th- that's th- that's the that's the end goal and the design philosophy is how we get there which we're all they're yeah. intrinsic they're absolutely you cannot like you cannot match them yeah. anyway i'm gonna move on because we're we got still lots in to 2019. get through yeah we're, we're like, still in 2019 we're like we're this is like lo- the got longest year stream ever. It was a really good idea to spin this out into another stream. But uh, we, we, we can, uh, as you know, we can talk about vision for hours. Uh, I really wanted to showcase the crane because this was this was a pain in the ass to make. It was a lot mm-hmm. of fun, but a lot of <laughs> a pain in the ass at the same time. Oh my god, the crane! Uh, the only thing I did for the crane <laughs> was make some sound effects. <laughs> So uh, I, I I was deeply involved in in doing this, and so I can attest how how much of a and I love to showcase the different designs as well. Yeah, oh, this and, went through a ton of designs. Oh my god, this was this was hard. This was hard. This was not an easy feature. Uh, I want like show like, but I it I think this is a really cool example of what is the development uh, cycle, um, like particularly nowadays it was not like this in the beginning of the project but nowadays it's more like this you have this blocking phase on the top left corner in which you're just trying to figure out how it works uh the 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 game the gameplay elements of it are just starting to get developed and then you have a concept and it was like okay this is how it's going to look like which is the the one the second picture Mm -hmm. on, on the middle top there uh, which is the original concept from Julian. It might even not be the original, but it's like kind of like the final. It was early. <laughs> it was an early concept from Julian. I was like, okay, so we get that. We try to put that in game. How is that going to work? Uh, and then using that, we can see that like, well, there's a lot of things that are not going to work because of that. And I think in the crane particularly, there was a lot of con- a, a lot of uh, worries about uh, the crane going through arcs and, and, and the bulwark and things like that. The and that's bul- why we completely changed the design of it. Uh, and yeah, the also bulwark. because I was adamant that um, I remember arguing with Julian so much so like uh, this crane as it is on the top right cannot sustain uh, this amount of weight <laughs> that is carrying. I love, by the way, I love mechanical design. I really do. And I know that Julian like as well, but he 
I think he has a more aesthetic approach to it. And I have a more technical approach to it just due to the nature of our... And uh, we, we, we had a lot of cool talks back and forth between this. It was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I want to clear the air on that now because I don't remember designing something on the top, that thing on the top left. I think that was actually just some blocking that Anthony did at some No, point. I'm talking about the middle left. Oh, the, yeah, okay. The, 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 sorry, the middle top and the right top. And I had a lot of... Mis- oh, yeah, we had tons of talks about those two. But the very yeah. first one, uh, yeah, that wasn't me. <laughs> uh, Which is the, very common as well, by the way. Uh, for uh, uh, It's very common for artists, uh, before they get designed, uh, like, oh, we need a vehicle. You might just literally just put a box in. Like, this is a box. It doesn't... Yep has any design yet because it doesn't matter at that point the top middle one didn't make it literally because of the bulwark like it was the the bulwark is the bane of every tall vehicle in the game that it's (laughs) we had to find a design that fit under it basically so we we came up with some workarounds for that yeah (laughs) but but, uh the bulwark which actually would allow for the top for the top middle one nowadays i think yeah with with the decisions that we we changed. Uh, I just remember doing the crane, and I think that also helped with like the expansion of the naval and like the world conquest. It was a pretty important part, like just the idea of packaging things and putting them in crates and and, and shipping them somewhere it was a big deal yep. in in the game. And nope. to top it all, it was a really really fun rig to do. Mark. You're oh, say you know, I want to hold off so we can make sure that we make it to the end of the stream. <laughs> you can say I'm gonna, just going to showcase the war machine. Uh, <laughs> I, this I feels like it enemies. was yesterday. This wasn't that uh, long ago, was it? Jesus feels Christ. like it was a long time ago, man. 2019. Why does you feel like we just did this? Time goes by too fast. I, mean, I want man. to still want to get the whole thing nope. coming together. I still want to get smoke coming out of the chimneys on boats. This is a I, pretty, I pretty cool remember, reveal, to be I honest. I don't remember that. That was really corny in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty cool reveal, right? Yeah, I don't remember seeing it. I must have been too busy like running the stream. Or it's whatever. because it was not a trailer on itself. It was basically just no. an update video. Yep. Yeah. So uh, Yo, I what just, is this map? <laughs> I, don't I just did that. it out of. I just like. Update videos, just so people understand, update videos, I kind of do it on my own in the sense that like it's a little bit more insulated than the rest of the team. I usually have a lot, a lot of help from Julian and Adam and Anthony mm-hmm. at that point, like on capturing footage and stuff like that. But it's more me and Mark. Mark has a, an idea of like we want to showcase and then I just go with it. Trailers are way more involved. Trailers are a big affair. Trailers are hard. Yeah, uh, trailers are hard. hard. It reminded me. Um, at one point earlier, you showed an image of someone standing in front of a whiteboard, drawing out the grid, or mm-hmm. like mar- that. Yeah. He's, mar- for, he's marking stuff down. Yeah, for yeah. everyone, that was Leon. By the way, um, oh, I didn't want Leon. Say, I don't know if Leon, Leon had a huge part. <laughs> oh, okay. Leon had a huge part in this update when we added like all the new maps and added like just. He yeah, did a lot. Was big, Leon, was such Leon, a big help. Leon is did a ton of work. Uh, he also modeled the Falchion, in case anyone was wondering. Yeah, yeah. Leon. Leon is a is a workhorse. <laughs> yep. absolutely. Uh, it, it's kind of I, I like the fact that like <clears throat> I, this is really fun too because you can see how when people get introduced into the team and uh, how much they bring into the team. <laughs> I don't think that um, this was his first big update. I think. Yeah, yeah. without him. Honestly, uh, this this update would would not have been out nope. <laughs> at that moment. Nope. No. Way. Yeah, he's tu- he's yeah. touched on um, like level design and um, uh, or I guess just like the building the levels. Oh, he did yeah. straight up design. Yeah, oh, uh, so it wasn't and three D modeling, three yeah. D modeling, animating, rigging. Like he's um, he's a workhorse. Yeah, he's a workhorse. <laughs> Cannot wait for you guys to see the new hire. As well, it's gonna be hey, oh, yeah. HP. Yeah. Um, sorry to interrupt, but oh, how much is... longer do you think this is gonna be? Dude, this is 2019. We haven't hit the 2021. Oh, We're gonna try to run just, through it. Yeah, we it's should. It's getting just a little bit faster r- because uh, yeah, just because uh, this stuff's more recent are... anyway. But 
Yeah. There is some okay. stuff that I have to do for the launch tomorrow. Um, so <laughs> this, this I, is delaying I, the launch, everyone. Hey, you know guys, what? If I'll, you need to I'll leave, Mark, yeah. we can run without you as well. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll see how long I can. Yeah. Like, we're, okay. We're going to try to go through this, but I didn't want to like stop. I think this is one of, if not the largest change in Foxhole that we never thought it was going to be possible, but because we have an unbelievable, amazing developer in the name of Casey, uh, this was possible. Yep. The amount of work uh, that went I, into this, you guys don't, like, I, I don't know that you'll ever really understand how much. Just so you understand where you're seeing this. this. <laughs> Up until this point, ever since 2016, we were been working with Unreal 4, and one of the things that was, uh, because we don't use voxels, and Unreal 4 does allow for voxels because we don't use that, we use something called landscape. And like Unreal didn't really work well with trying to dig holes. And our game is called a foxhole. <laughs> and and we, you couldn't dig in the landscape. And this is something that we always, always, ever since before we even started doing, we wanted to have. Like we want to dig your own trenches, we want to dig your own foxholes. And you it was not possible. So um, this is Casey basically figuring it out, how to make digging into the landscape possible. And I cannot like just talk enough of how amazing. What, what you're is. seeing in the blue there is like a grid of like vertices that are being laid out uh, so that he can see what's happening. So, so here's, here's something on top of that HP is like, Making this happen in a single player game is hard. Making yeah. it happen in a multiplayer game is harder. Making it happen in a multiplayer game that has to have more than 200 players per server is bonkers, right? <laughs> so let me just leave it at that. Oh, right? yeah, because well, people we, don't yeah. understand that like having a game that has six versus six or 10 versus 10 is very and a different. Bunch, and a bunch of stuff happening yeah. in, this, in the map, it's very different than something that has like 200 people at the same time playing with a bunch of stuff happening in the map and people building stuff and having vehicles. So Up until now, we thought it was impossible. Like up until this point, yeah. we thought we couldn't do it and it wouldn't be in the game. Well, yeah. If you guys are wondering what this is, this is just some asset that Anthony gave Casey to test with. This yeah. wasn't yeah. like designed for anything. Yeah, it, but... <clears throat> Uh, yeah, it was insane. Also, and that uh, before us... before you go on, I I just again I got to shout out um, Anthony's contributions to the trenches. Like, oh yeah, it was absolutely. pretty much Casey at the time. Anyway, it was pretty much Casey and Anthony uh, on trenches, and they made magic. Uh, they really did. And they're not here, so I'm gonna shout them out. It, they deserve <laughs> it. They, they they absolutely both of them deserve all the praise that comes. And which allowed us to do things like designing a base, which is something that we never had before. Uh, but like uh, this kind of modular base building under the ground. Like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't want to, uh, because we are r totally running way past the time that Julian has to walk his dogs. Uh, nope. Uh, my fiance already took them out. So awesome. Uh, we, uh, I, I don't want to dwell too much into it. But so I'm going to kind of like, Speed through it, but this is what like really allows us to do a lot of stuff that we don't have, we have in the game right now that we take for granted. Uh, and 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 this is like kind of like uh, like this is this is basically us seeing bunker bases being built and and upgraded. Like it, it's just it was mind blowing for us. It, it really was. Um, <laughs> I have two... this test map still. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> oh, two. Minor and major things. Um, Anthony also designed the majority of the um, trenches, like all the tiers and stuff. Uh, I we just let him add it, like the look of the concrete, the look of the like wood, and all of that. Uh, me and Mark helped by complaining what we didn't like a little bit, but it was mostly Anthony. Uh, I did a bit of stuff on the like various upgrades, uh, but that's that. I think, so. I think all the upgrades got mm -hmm. but Yeah. Yeah. Which, <laughs> of course, all came together in the, into the actual trench warfare. Yep. Uh, I did which... the storm cannon. Like, I did the big stuff, but all this stuff that you... Like, the shit that you see 99% of the time on screen was uh, it, Anthony. It was... It, it took a lot of iterations. This was, like, a lot of work. 
like uh, i can't str- uh, i know i said that a lot, like oh this was so much work but like i can't stress enough how like how many iterations this stuff takes to kind yeah. of get right Mm-hmm. Take, take 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 note of the the fact that all the trenches are connected to itself. There, there there's no curving or anything like that. They're like just like one connected to another, as you can see in here, right? It's just like one after another. There was no trench connector. There was nothing like that. But it it was it's such a big deal. Uh, and then of course, once again. <laughs> Casing come to the rescue, like trying to figure out how can you do trench connectors and things like that. It's not actually, easy. Actually, <laughs> we he recently went back to that, and um, in this update, uh, I, I don't know what to talk about the future, but he improved the algorithm recently um, to make it much more, much more, uh, much more robust. So yeah, um, less fewer holes less in the ground. Holes, yeah. So. Spoilers. Now they know. I know, right? Uh, another man, another thing that is, I think was pretty, 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 pretty big for us, uh, was the driving. Oh yeah. I forgot. I totally forgot. The, yeah. Like driving used to be like, it was very simplistic in certain ways. Let's be right. tactile and call it less perfect before. Exactly. And, uh, there was a, a ton of work done to, to make sure that like it felt much better each vehicle felt different. They, they, they actually turned as they were supposed to turn, like like pivot point on the back axle and like turning turning radius on the front axle and things like that. It's 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 and this was a lot of development time. What? Again. <laughs> Someone asked what the fuck is in the top left. Um <laughs> Oh yeah, no. okay. I, I included Which, this video what? because what? it had it had, it had Frodo on the top left. So it had what? Frodo on the top left. In our very first internal development tests for Foxhole, we didn't have like icons for anything. So I have I put an icon of Frodo, Gimli, and Legolas as our resources. Um, for it was like wood, cloth, and metal at the time, and everybody uses them as a joke now. Uh, when we don't have something to put in. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is. There's a really good great. screenshot that uh, that uh, Stefan has where he was flying around in the editor, and there was a log like an icon of Frodo inside of a building because there's like cloth or something all... in there, and you can see him staring back at you through the window. <laughs> it's really creepy. It's always hilarious <laughs> when like someone new joins the team, and then, <laughs> and then they find they, it, and then they like the first time they're like, guys. What the fuck is this? And <laughs> everyone else starts laughing, and they're like, "What are they laughing about?" This is dumb. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. If we didn't mention it, the driving was also Casey. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, pra- praise. I don't want to. I don't want to undermine, uh, for instance, like Rohan and, and Phil that do a ton of work. This is uh, the flashy on, stuff on on, right. on on server side and on <clears throat> content side and weapons and vehicles. Oh, it's just I can Casey, tell you, Casey has the better videos. <laughs> yeah, it's really Casey what it comes has, down to. Casey has like the stuff that is like easy to visualize yeah. in a video, but like all the little things that you guys bring up, um, like all the quality of life stuff, like tons of these things that you bring to my attention, or you you bring to our attention that improve Foxhole for you on a regular basis, like. The other programmers spend so much time in this stuff. Mm-hmm. It's it's crazy, but it's hard to show that. You know what I mean? It's not like, like oh, you, you um, you like you know you fixed twenty bugs and you like improve this quality of life thing that people have been asked for. Even regiments HP. It's funny because regiments alone was a massive feature, huge, Absolutely, right? But it's so hard to show it in a video, and we had to kind of put it at the end of the update video i remember when we made it and, we and we're it's like, like it doesn't look kinda, good yeah it kind of sucks that like you know but it's something functionally people use every day right so it's like and, and there's a lot so of work I, behind the scenes on it i would yeah it's important to exalt the other guys as well like but that was real casey and, happens to have the flashier videos and and, yeah, and, and, ta- and talking about that as well like pretty much every like everything that goes to the art pipeline goes through like adam so 
you know, just to kind of shout out Adam as well, because he hasn't gotten a lot here either. Um, pretty, sure. pretty much everything, the vehicle, I'm pretty sure he made this vehicle, like for instance, like pretty much yep. all of that stuff, Adam has a hand in, um, so. He, he whipped Leon into shape, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and, and to top it all, yeah, he also and trained Anthony. all the other artists. Yeah, He's so the it's it, like granddad. some good stuff. Uh, like the so, bicycle, yeah. <laughs> which like, <laughs> well, okay, yeah, that was Adam. actually the, the bike bicycle? wouldn't have happened at all without Adam. So. Without Adam, Adam was like, "Hey, I want to put a bicycle in. I have a bicycle. Can you animate it?" And I'm like, "Sure, just yeah." Actually, um, it. to to the vehicle system was actually um, all all the vehicles you see is because of a a a, a system that Phil came up with. He was the mm -hmm. one he built. He built the modular system, right? So the reason why you can have a a, a truck like a like a standard truck, and then one with a with like a machine gun attached to it, one with treads. You could do it the brute force way. You could just make manually make them all. But um, we built them in a modular way, and that and that system was um, completely built completely built by Phil, which was Absolutely. which was a massive undertaking. Um, it was like. Um, I mean, I think HP, you were heavily involved with that, so you know how much work that was. It was a lot of work. It was yeah, yeah. it was almost scary the amount of work that was going to go into this like the, vehicle overhaul. To be honest, like, like, and Phil, it, it's true. Like if Phil hasn't like uh, set it up the system to be so easy to work, it would have been a nightmare. Uh, it would have been a nightmare. It would have been, been an nightmare. absolute nightmare. Yeah, that that, that uh, scout the uh, the LUV there the the open top, um, it it shares the same fundamental parts. Like actually, in terms of the assets and logic, it, it actually is the same vehicle as the other ones, except the other ones just have these extra parts on top. So it's not like two completely separate things, which, you know, I don't know if that's like a... It, 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 when you say though. that, Mark, I think that uh, some people might say, oh, if it is the same thing, then it's like an easy thing to do. It's like, no, like... In order for you in game development to have something that you can reutilize on different assets like that in such an easy way is not an easy setup. Yeah. It becomes easy later for you to reutilize, but it only becomes easy later because there's a lot of work beforehand into figuring it out oh, and absolutely. setting it up so yeah. that the system yeah. works that way. Well, before uh, before the vehicle, the big vehicle update where we added all the stuff every single vehicle was like an individual thing and everything was hand like yeah. custom done for that vehicle. And then Phil wrote the entire system to make it modular. So we yeah. could it's go really good with everything. And there's another, like, this is more of like a boring, like the opposite of showing, showing off in the video thing that I do want to point out. Um, we did a major refactor last spring and we kind of, I think we've talked about it in the blog. I called it like spring cleaning or something. But up till that point, you have to understand that when you're working on a game for a, a long time and you keep on adding in new content, new features, your code base gets super messy and you get like, what you end up with is um, tons of switches all over the place, tons of code, and that causes lots of bugs. And to add new content with in that situation is very bad. It'll be unsustainable. At some point, the game is going to break down because there's just too many bugs, right? It's kind of yeah. like um adding more stuff into your garden eventually is just going to be a mess there's going to be lots of weed everywhere and it's going to completely spiral a spiral a spiral out of control but last last spring one of the massive undertakings that we did and this is something that rohan and phil were very heavily involved with is to go back and to refactor all that right so this is something that nobody will ever see but if we didn't do that there's no way we would be able to do the, the amount of it used to take Let's just put this into the perspective. It used to take us weeks to assemble a new vehicle. It was a big, I don't know if you remember, guys. It was like a big yep. deal. Like, oh, we got to make one new vehicle. Guys, it's going to be tons of work, like a week. Now, we can do it, like, I would say five, six times faster than before. Yeah. I'm not talking about the modeling, to be specific. The modeling is still going to take a lot of time, right? Um, and a lot of the art assets. But in terms of the code integration, it is so much faster now because we did a lot of spring cleaning, right? So... This is like a part of the project where, you know, it's not like there's things that aren't seen, but there's a lot of work that gets put into this kind of thing to make something like 
50 vehicles in the game or like 100 vehicles in the game, right? So um, anyways. I want mm-hmm. to point out one thing from previous, which was to knock Casey down a peg to knock him down. Com- compared to all the other <laughs> uh, all the other programmers. Is that um, because he figured out how to do trenches, I believe that delayed the new vehicle 2020 a little bit. <laughs> Where, uh, I believe you would have been experiencing new vehicle 2020 a lot sooner. Had, we'll blame cases. That had we saying. not figured out how to do trenches. 100% uh, but, uh, cool. but That's just a joke. Anyways, back to the whatever. Yeah, that image. Yeah, so in June, June to 2020, so mid-year last year, we were like doing a uh, new, like, we we're just like, I think at this point, we we're li- reaching a stride in the game in which like it's pretty confident we were like adding new features and new assets. Uh, and then, like, I just wanted to showcase because I remember this being a lot of fun. Uh, the coastal gun that's mm-hmm. one of the assets. Uh, and uh, I, I just wanted to showcase what the kind of stuff that we receive. Uh, I remember that drawing Ooh, drew that. For, from Mark. I remember clearly who it was. <laughs> was that Mark? Because I feel uh, like I could have cool. easily drawn that too. <laughs> no, this was 100% Mark that drew that as uh, what he wants uh, Mar- a, a coastal gun to be. And yeah. then what? How Julian has the ability to translate? That, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> what Mark does is above my pay grade. That's it's too uh, good. You like the concept to, art? I wanted to showcase that one because I remember I also received that one. Uh, so I decided, you know what? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> uh, I will finally actually execute in one of them on a, one of Mark's uh, actual oh, design. Oh God, this so, is hilarious. Please, guys, be 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 happy that uh, you don't actually get Mark's designs <laughs> in game. <laughs> I didn't know you had this. I man. forgot you made that. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, oh. uh, in a sec, go the back shadows, to the. the sh- <laughs> yeah, I love that it's casting shadow. shadows. Uh, I want to point out that when we showed this off on stream, I took out the note next to the guy with the flamethrower, and I wrote that note as an internal joke. But um, I intentionally Dude. drew a guy with a flamethrower so that on stream, Mark would have to explain that flamethrowers aren't coming anytime soon. Like, I was just like, this what, drawing it will force him to have to uh, be mean to everybody. But fun. then when it, came to the, yeah, <laughs> when it came to the actual stream, I took out the note. So. Too many yeah. jokes. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that you. I didn't know that you put that in. This was a particularly good, like good asset. I love doing this asset. This is uh, hilarious. I spent I spent that, almost it, an hour doing this whole thing. Because it's square. <laughs> is that the colonial variant? Is that like their <laughs> their faction specific coastal gun? Uh, anyway, uh, and that that also brought us, of course, brought us to the arms race. With vehicle variants, with with all the new. I was so scared um, for this update just because of the sheer amount of content that we had to put in the game. Yeah, um, that was it was, was a big one. It was very these these big updates are just incredibly stressful. Like, I, and they, it feels like yeah. uh, ever since, uh, like, I think the the new world conquest. Every update, every big update really felt like it was a big update in the sense that like it was stressful to put out. We never knew if like, is this going to be well received? Is it not going to be well received, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's always tough because we're bouncing. Like we want to, we want to put in more cool things and we have to balance that with making sure that we don't, we don't like overdo it. And then um, we run out of time and all this stuff, but uh, man, it's, it's like my thought with this update was, Okay, the last, <laughs> it's funny because my thought for the last two updates, and I'll start with this one. My thought with this one was, hey, two updates ago, we changed every region in the world to a hexagon. We attached them seamlessly, and we also created tons of maps. That was one of them. And we made a crane, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, a that was crane And all this stuff. And then the update after that, we poked literally holes in the world. And added a trench system and a bunker system and transformed the world in that way. I'm like, what's adding a couple of vehicles? This is this is gonna be easy, right? But for some reason, it 
it felt a lot harder. And for for the Winter Army update, it was the same. I was like, man, last update we were adding all these vehicles. This is gonna be way easier, but it's not. And the reason why it's not easier and, and in fact it's harder is because the expectations are much higher now. And like I feel like because we are arriving at this point where um we we don't want to uh we want things to be the quality bar of the whole game is 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 higher. So like before we'd be okay with okay, sure, we're poking holes in the world, but hey, you know, we're we're more accepting to some other things being more broken yeah. or, or not feeling good. But mm-hmm. but now it's like smaller things we care about. Like, man, even that small thing that I don't want it to be ruined. I don't want to break that small thing. And trying to make a big update to with the with the quality bar at that level, it just makes it exponentially harder, right? Because you have to consider the entire like ecosystem. There's more players now too, right? And this is the one thing that makes it harder is you change one thing and you don't realize that like, okay, well, there are players who spend their whole time making bases. Are we screwing that up? There's players that spend their whole time as a partisan player. Are we screwing that up? And there's just so much parts of the game that everything... When you add one thing, you have to consider so many things now. And that thing, that's the reason why these new updates are actually, in fact, I feel like in a lot of ways, they're harder than the old updates. Yeah. Yep, as a result. It feels Even a lot not, more, yeah. it feels a lot more like production, production, as opposed to, yeah. like, as opposed to like yeah. alpha. Like, I feel like we've, we, like, Which makes by sense. this stage, we've started to move out of like alpha towards the beta and, and that becomes production. And so that becomes a lot I mean, yeah. game development, like pr- production, is when th- now we kind of know what we're doing, so we're putting a whole bunch of work into assets. So um, th- this this is where it really first started to feel like that. So even though a lot of the other stuff was like really experimental, yeah. and so it was harder from a conceptual standpoint to get in, this felt stressful because it's like huh, we have to manage all this content now. Like we manage all this, yeah. <laughs> but you guys don't understand the like arguments that happen over like things like naming conventions, especially from me. Um, oh, me yeah. and HB are like we are extremely anal about this stuff, um, and I, I it, it like I cannot understate how something as simple as that can make it more complicated. You have to really like work on that in order to get this stuff out. Yeah. It's it's impossible otherwise. Um, there's just too much. It's it's not just like oh the vehicle. You have to consider the vehicle, every animation for the vehicle, every sound effect for the vehicle, every visual effect, um, every model involved in the vehicle, um, the 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 code that's involved. There's like so many layers and layers and layers of things, and that's for one vehicle, and you have to do that for every vehicle, and it becomes like it it, it becomes exponentially more complicated when you add so much more. Um, Speaking of code development, uh, server improvements. Which is something hard to uh, showcase, but fortunately, once again, people coming with the best best videos in the world uh, showcase how we how we we do performance on the service uh, that we are increasing. I I don't know if just just as, as a reminder, our official our original um, combat prototype was thirty two versus thirty two, yeah. sixty four players in total, and this is one of the ways that we do. Uh, uh, yeah, so what... Yeah, sorry, HB, if you don't well, mind. No, no, this is one of the ways so... that we do server performance yeah. testing. And, like, when we're always trying to reach higher and higher <laughs> like, levels, right? It's like lemmings. So it's so funny. So what, so what you're seeing here is if you um, ever used a tool like uh, 3D Mark or um, a benchmarking tool for your graphics and then it benchmarks it and it gives you like FPS, right? This is basically our equivalent of 3D Mark, but benchmarking um, server server performance, right? So we developed this tool, it's called Warbench, and it tries to simulate what happens because we can't obviously get 200 people on a server and then run our benchmarking tools, right? That's very expensive and hard to do. So we created this test where it um it creates it spawns a bunch of bot it spawns a bunch of bots um and we try to simulate as much as possible um uh what a real world condition would be like if there's 200 people on a server and then we we take a profile of that and we find where all the problem areas are in the code and then we um and then 
and then we optimize it. And that's how we're able to raise our server account, right? So, uh, Kel Moore is asking, wait, are bots possible in Foxhole? No, no, you don't have bots. This is what's possible. This is, in, <laughs> this is internally us testing the server. There are no bots in Foxhole. <laughs> but but uh, isn't this just as smart as the average player? Oh, Ooh, <laughs> shots fire. Burn. Um, I want to point out one thing in the, pre, in the Foxhole arms race update video. Sure, that, you're running out of time, Julian. You gotta point out quickly. Yeah, no, no, don't. You don't have to play it again. The on the warden truck with the tracks. At that oh point in God. time, the wheels and tracks were going backwards, and that was a problem that we had to fix. But we didn't fix it in time for the trailer. So if you look close, the uh, tank tread on that warden truck is going backwards. The warden truck. Yep. Oh, the warden. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> I was so pissed about that. I'm trying to find. Anyway. Uh, here it's somewhere around here anyway uh, you, you guys can it. go back and watch it yeah uh this oh is boy. cool this i made this, this video this is, yeah of course man i uh us prototyping weather control uh by us i mean Matt, this was this a case. long time ago long, this, this was video was made so the weather stuff i did prototypes for the weather stuff in 2019 yeah, I remember that. Uh, and yeah. that's what this is from. This um, is from oh, then maybe the files were wrong because yeah, I got this from the drive. Um, th this was uh, this was like one of the very first seeing what I could do with it, basically, um, to see if it was even possible because <laughs> because we weren't even sure. Um, and you can see like one of the big challenges like is like oh those puddles on the ground are made of water i would just like go through the scene over and over and over again and figure out everything that didn't work and then like i'd have to like address that and figure out how, how it all built into the system so those puddles have to turn to ice and like et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. everything has to kind of shift and so that was actually kind of a really hard um, you took forever there was like weeks of you being like i'm updating textures like in the morning in the morning oh, we, we'll just update each every morning we update each other now that we're remote yeah. and we matt an for answer. like a couple weeks is just i'm updating textures that's it yeah uh i don't know if then this, this is this a might be a little bit uh, in your or yeah. yeah this is showing the ways that i could control it um <laughs> with that bug i remember that bug. it's not a bug it's just an extreme value the um, vampire mode yeah and then showing <laughs> showing the wind on the on, on everything and you got you and adam had to figure out the wind too yeah that was a big deal um and this was before i had gone through the textures you can tell because it's flat um the way that the weather turns on and off and stuff um yeah this shit's fun i really enjoyed figuring this out I did enjoy going through the textures, but the final product was worth it. Yeah, it took forever. <laughs> it took a long time, but it was worth it. Uh, yeah, which, of course, as we're reaching closer and closer to now, this is February 21st. The, God, this the, the is so long ago. big update. I know it feels longer, but uh, it was just in February, like literally like two months ago at most, which is the winter the 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 winter army the weather and bombardment and all the cool stuff we we it's, it's insane i like looking back it's, it's insane how how much was done it's, it's yeah. seems like a lot for a, to be honest it seems like a lot for a team that's this small like of like a, a dozen of, of developers at most we didn't even talk about 2020 and like the challenges of like switching over to like a work from home Thing. Yeah, because it was like I was like, oh, I don't have anything like that is uh, <laughs> game related. It was just a, an insane time. I think everybody knows on. what happened in twenty. I think everybody is of aware course, of yeah. It. But it was it, it. But we did have to address though. Like it was. Yeah. yeah I think yeah. I think we did it pretty smoothly. Uh, you know, management was <laughs> really really good at getting us all done. Yeah. So if we out, exalted, we exalted all the programmers and all the artists. Uh, now it's time for me, uh, Julian, and and Matt. To exalt a management on uh, Mark and Alka's side, yeah. uh, they are the leaders of of Clapfoot as a whole, and uh, and and Foxo as a game. And uh, to be honest, uh, 2020 for us wouldn't have been as, as 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 smooth if it wasn't for them. Like readily, like okay, we're gonna switch to uh, remote working, and we're gonna give all the like. Uh, 
everything that you guys need in order to work from home uh and more uh it was it was totally it was at our hands and they they totally helped us out with everything mm -hmm. which allowed the game to continue on the same pace basically i don't think we we had much of a of a down uh, downtime because of because of as the game goes to say the backstreet boy reunion the COVID things uh we so it, it is it is a testament to their leadership and to the way they they continue to have clapped with uh moving forward to be honest and kind of yeah be on top of stuff and not no uh, not like just be like ah this one like COVID when it first began not being like ah it won't affect anyone everybody keep coming in it was yeah like, yeah no this is serious and we're dealing with it so we can keep going kind of thing absolutely so to like props to them mm -hmm. uh you're allowed to say something, Mark, even though it's awkward. <laughs> yeah, you can you can <laughs> drop yourself off here. Well, thanks, HB. That's that's uh, it's very nice of you to say. Um, but <laughs> Don't you know, I would anymore. You know, I would do the whole. But thank you guys for X Y Z. But then everyone will be sitting in chat being like, "This is super cringy." So yeah. yeah I'll, so I'll, don't worry. I'll do it at the end. I'm cringy enough as it yeah, is. <laughs> Nobody expects anything of me anyway. No, thank you guys oh, for all. The I will do it at the end. You put in, right? but it's true. Like, uh, like we're reaching the end, uh, the like of like where we are right now, and it's insane that we reached over five thousand players, concurrent players. Not like like we have. Like on every war, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of players, way more than 5,000. But to actually have, and this is a screenshot of a war, actually like 5,000 players playing on the same war, on the same world, on the same no, war. No, 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 no. It wasn't 5,000 in the same world. Let me correct Sorry, it was two one. shards. Yeah, it was two shards. Um, one of them got to, I think, a critical number at some point of like high 3,000s. And then we we reached three thousand the same shard. It's true. We we had three thousand the same shard, and in one war start there was like thirty five hundred people in the same shard. Mm -hmm. um, but we split it off into the second shard at that point because it just wasn't. We we didn't think this would happen for like maybe until like the next until like the sure. next update or or something. But but just but we just thought yeah. yeah sorry about that. Uh, but yeah. we thought was, this was going to happen on live. Like when we uh, even though we're like like it or not 1.0 is going just going to be the continuation of the development of the game it's not like we're going to stop or anything like that but of course 1.0 is going to be a moment in which we as a company we do a little bit more of a push to make sure like the hey the game's being released and everything so we thought we were going to reach something like that in 1.0 uh to 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 have that happen right now is actually quite impressive quite um quite humbling in the sense that like man this is a lot of players playing our game, something that we've been working on for the past five years, almost six now, and uh, more if you continue, consider pre-production. And it is really, really amazing. Uh, you guys can see how much the game developed. From like this screenshot, it would not have been possible on the combat prototype, as it is. Like, straight up not. There's so many things going on in there, in the amount of players... Having have, having clans and different factions with different visuals and trenches that dig into the ground and people and the amount of content and vehicles and weapons and all that it, it, this screenshot it was so far away uh, from what we had when we first started this on 2016 that is kind of insane to be honest uh, it's just. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what else to say. It's it it's quite amazing. I think it's just a culmination of everything that we've done so far. And of course, it wouldn't be half as possible if it wasn't for the community. Uh this is just like a small show game. I, I just realized, for instance, I'm 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 missing so many people. I'm missing helping hands. I I I'm missing all uh, all the people that I'm missing all the original KFC videos. Like I'm missing a lot of the things that like um it's just the community, of course, it's stick with us through thick and thin. Being you international or not, uh, it's 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 quite amazing uh, that we have people from there, from like early 2016. Like I saw a bear. Uh, I want to do a community-centric 
Thank you. Uh, retrospective, maybe when 1.0 is released or maybe just after that, don't know. Uh, but it's, it, it is quite amazing. I want to reiterate that when I was first hired, Mark said that 300 concurrent people would be considered a success for the game. So like over 5,000 concurrent people at this point. Is, more than uh, 10 times that. More than <laughs> yeah. 10 times that. It's a pretty good improvement. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's quite surprising. Yeah. So yeah, so this is, I, we're going to reach to an end finally. It's like, this is the long, I think this might be the longest stream that we've ever done. Yep, uh, <laughs> it sure is. Yep, uh, this is insane. Uh, thank you so much for everybody that uh, that helped us to get here. Uh, thank you for the community uh, and, and 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 this is not working at all. I think there's too many videos. There you go. Thank you for the community. Uh, thank you for everybody that helped us up until now. Uh, and thank you for showcasing. Uh, I hope this was fun. Yeah, very unscripted. I it just was fun put for a me. bunch of stuff together. I had I not you guys seen had, yeah the PowerPoint. I had not seen any of this before. Right? Yeah, now. I didn't see so any there. It was but fun for I'm me. looking forward to the community retrospective, which will hopefully I want to do it some sometime this year. HB, mm -hmm. um, maybe after the summer update or or something, but. I'm hyped now that we've done this one and like it was, I, I, I had no expectations, but I really enjoyed it. And it's making me hyped up for the community one because I, there's like so much like shenanigans that's happened over the last <laughs> couple of years that it would just be, um, it'd be fun. It'd be really fun doing that one. We need and, to make sure uh, that we have a uh, KSC here for that though. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Matt. It's on you now. All right, everybody. Uh, we got a little special ending for you here, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna sign off. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming and hanging out, and uh, we love y'all. And we'll see you when we see you. Goodbye. Bye. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, thank guys. Thank you very you much. Yeah. We'll see you next time. And as always, as always, as always, as always, stay, stay foxy. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs>